Um, so the last version of Soul Struct I sent you will be fine for this. You know, I've made a few tweaks in the last week, but not, nothing that would affect what we're doing today. So we can just reuse the same executable. Very good. And the same and project. Mastered. Because, you know, we want this to be Capra Demon plus Rat Ambush Mod. That'll be the official name. Oh, yeah, I guess. Uh, hold on. Whoops, whoops, whoops. whoops. If we already have a project, can do I? I guess I have to load it up and then load that project. Like, yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, double click the executable mm -hmm. and um, direct it. Oh, choose it's, the game. I see. I see. Yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. Let's see. Wait. Where is this even? It's on my desktop. Yeah, desktop. <laughs> Soulstruct. New test. Copy game events. Yes to everything, pretty much. Or no for this one. Yeah, that that version that pops up every time, whether it's done or not. So it doesn't doesn't really matter. Okay, at this okay, point. cool. It's, it's, a boarding start. Uh oh, it it's a quest with no real branching. Replace capper dogs with rats who also ambush you. <gasps> like what we learned last time. It's <laughs> brilliant. Uh, soul struct new test. Let's see. That's a strange no. error. I said don't bother this time, and it worked. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Maybe uh, it's just a file conflict yeah maybe it's okay all right okay um, what other programs you might want are... to zoom in your um your right your screen again yeah, absolutely right the text really and then good. and then the full Cause... screen was yeah i forgot to try and come up with a solution for that but that's okay we can you know the, the ai scripts are written in a language called lua which oh, is yeah. you know very commonly used high level language uh, much easier to wrap your head around than the event scripting language um, and of course, yeah, you could, you could do it in a text editor. I don't recommend that, but, uh, Soulstruct probably going to be a little more useful here just because it does coloring for Lua, um, compared to any programs that you might have around. Cool. So if we jump over to the AI tab here, just uh, next to events, mm -hmm. we have the same sort of setup here. So we have a drop down of different maps. Uh, the common AI scripts all go in this a set called AI common. These are scripts that are going to be loaded in every map, regardless of where you are. And then we have all these map specific scripts and this game is old enough that it's it, it's quite unfortunate but any enemy that you place in a map you have to kind of manually make sure the ai script is there to be found in that map as well in gotcha. newer games like elden ring it's all done automatically you know the game knows which enemies are in the map and so it knows which ai scripts to import nice unfortunately it's one of the big um, obstacles here but it's not that hard fortunately uh, we have the the tools for dark souls one to to make it pretty easy at this point and yeah, you can see all the internal names for the AI scripts here. Yeah, Black Dragon's Dog Battle. That, I, I don't think I found that that fight. <laughs> That's the, the Black Dogs in Ulysseal. Oh, okay. So right outside Calamite? Yeah. So they are officially Calamite's dogs. It's, uh, oh, it's the law. Oh, interesting. Chain Man. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, you can see here when they released the DLC, the Artorias DLC, they just dumped all of the new AI scripts in common. Uh, gotcha. They also put them in the new DLC map, but I have a feeling that Qlock, oh, no, sorry, this was way before Qlock, that From just had the same issues that a lot of modders had where they just couldn't get the scripts to work, so they just dumped <laughs> them in common, and that's the easiest way to make it work. But I think there is a limit, you know, we've, when we're done modding, we've tried to dump everything in common, and at some point oh. you do reach some kind of stupid limit. So Interesting. Uh, not, okay. not the ultimate solution. Okay, so we're going to look in... Uh... Uh, undead burg slash paris i i presume that's it all right yeah. so all of these scripts they have um oh by the way just since we saw them in the common ai there's also all these uh files that just contain shortcut functions and kind of wrapper functions that we won't see in other maps you can see near the top you've got all these turnaround basic attacks yeah 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 uh, all, all this stuff that's so interesting. uh you'll see a lot of other scripts calling functions that were imported from those scripts but okay. Typically, not something you have to mess with. That would be a pretty, pretty serious mod. Now, what? Um, sh if I click these, should I not see like some scripting pop up in the? In the so Lua, box? Lua, you can you can ship it when you're releasing a game. You can ship the Lua scripts as uncompiled text or as compiled. It's kind of uh, ready to. You know the functions are there to be called but it's not a plain text file uh, but okay. the game actually accepts both so the game has been packaged with the compiled files but if you just click that decompile button if you select a script not all of them can be decompiled but um that decompile red button oh, in the bottom right uh, will light up. oh i see i see decompile okay. interesting okay there we go hmm mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. 
So there you go. So this is a decompiled Lua script, mm -hmm. and we can make any changes we want to it. Again, this is this is not the kind of script we would probably change because this sure, is like yeah. a low-level function. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. yeah, you can you can make edits here and then just click. Um, I mean, there's a bunch of buttons around that have confusingly similar names, but you can save the changes and then export basically. Gotcha. So you know, all of the AI scripts have to be exported at once because it's creating one of those conjoined binder files that we looked at looked at a couple of weeks ago. But yeah, pretty okay. straightforward. Very nice. Well, let's so see. yeah, we have the enemy IDs. These are the same as the NPC param IDs that we've looked at previously. Those six-digit numbers. So those are all familiar. And you know, they're just the first four digits of those will be the model ID. We also have scripts here for player characters. Like you know, you can see, you can guess. It's kind of a fun trivia. Hamble? You can guess the NPC. Hamble battle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cable, Sun Cable. Knight, mm -hmm. yeah. Sun Knight or Knight of Sun, depending on whether he's an NPC or a summon. Apparently, <laughs> yeah, interesting. Dragon Oracle. Hold on. Yeah, who do you think that is? <sighs> Let's see. Well, who who else is there? Is White Holy Woman? That's uh, what's her name? Rhea, probably, and mm. then. Held Knight. Oh, locked. Oh, <laughs> Laugh Track. Laugh yeah, Track. Love, laugh Track is a, that's a great modding meme. We talk about <laughs> Laugh Track a lot. <laughs> laugh Track. Pupil of Logarn. Uh, oh, so that would probably be Logan's pupil, which is, um, geez, what's his name? G Gabriel. No, what's his name? <laughs> Griggs. 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 Yeah. Knight of Sun. Dragon Oracle. <sighs> Uh, I can't think about it. I can't any think. guesses in chat either. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know who's Someone doing. you might easily forget for most playthroughs. This is uh, Oswald. Really? Dragon yeah. Oracle? I guess Oracle. I, okay. Interesting. Huh. Yep. All right. You tell me. Who knows what it means? I'm not sure um, yeah, what the official Varty take on, on that name is. But um, <laughs> yeah, definitely one of the most confusing names when you're trying to attach them to real characters. <gasps> DS2 pot battle? Wait a <laughs> minute. Okay, anyways, uh, so we are looking to mod Capra Demon here. Are there typically... That would be, yeah. Are there typically, like... I mean, I guess it depends on the fight, but is there usually, like, one AI script file per boss fight or multiple, depending on... So, um, yeah, you know, the AI system, enemies can enter different modes. Uh, the only two modes we really care about for AI are battle and non-battle. So okay. all the battle scripts here, they end with the word battle and they have that red B on the left indicating mm. that they're a battle script. So mm -hmm. they'll be used when that enemy is in battle mode. Uh, then some of them have logic scripts, which mm. have the green L and the underscore logic. The mm -hmm. presence and absence of underscores in these templates is very annoying, but yeah, you have to get it right for the game to work, unfortunately. Uh, the logic scripts handle characters who were supposed to have special behavior outside battle. Most enemies are either just standing still mm -hmm. or just patrolling between points in the map. And yep. so they don't need these special logic scripts, but some enemies do. Um, and I yeah, can't remember any examples off the top of my head. You can see a uh, Husi Runaway, uh, 1002. Uh, that's a logic script. Oh, um, yep. So that's going to be a logic script for one of the hollows in Undead Berg that runs away from ah, you. Yeah. Which is, you know, unusual behavior, trying uh, to lure you into a bit of an ambush. Yeah, underneath the uh, the boar there. Yeah, right. Yeah. There's the, yeah, the, the gate opening one as well. Oh, so, yeah. That's yeah. Right. That's for, the, for the most part, these are battle scripts, and they're only going to be used when we're in battle. And we could go look up the names to find out who's who, but I happen to know Capra Demon is 2240. That's the model. So. Oh. Uh, two two four zero 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 nata nata which is um what's that just using it in japanese just means is it goat well i know a naginata isn't that a type of sword just gonna make sure since it's important we get it right hi tsukarima we are with the help of grimrock here learning how to mod from software games so this is episode number five, I think, already. Man, it's been flying. And we're learning now how to add a second phase to Capra Demon, as an example. Yeah. So Nata just means machete, apparently. So ah, it's okay. just the description of the weapons that the Capra Demon has. Gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Got right. Makes sense. I assumed it meant goat or something, but yeah, I should have mm. checked. I guess I just associate it with goat head now. Right, yeah. looking at it for so long. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, here's our, here's, here's our script. And yeah, like I said, this is a pretty 
highly templated as far as it goes. So a great this, example to start with. Yeah, this is already making some sense to me because we've yeah. got these IDs. You said 3000s are all the attacks, right? Mm -hmm. And so now we have just the AI for how far away he can use these abilities or wants to use these abilities. That's great. Exactly. That's yeah. cool. So um, first thing worth noting is that we have these readable names and that's actually a remastered only thing. In Prepare to Die Edition, they stripped all of the variable names from the scripts. Oh my. And so when you decompile it, you just get a bunch of stuff like variable one, variable two, and there's no uh, the original names to go on. So yeah. again, thank, thank you QLock. Just like they uh, automatically kind of unpacked all the game files, they really made things a bit easier for us, particularly with the internal functions that we didn't understand because they're much harder to figure out. So we are seeing the original script almost you know, down to the letter here that QLock um, wrote to the game. But of course they just copy pasted it from the original prepared diet. So at the top, we have a register goal thing that is making sure that this script is accessible under a certain name. That's kind of an internal thing. It really only matters if you're writing a brand new script, you just need to make sure you put a new register goal up top. Okay. So that first variable, the goal underscore NASA underscore battle, that's a variable that represents a number. The number is just going to be 224000. And that's telling the game, any enemy that asks for script 224000, this is the one you want. And then it has the name of the script. And you know you could put all those calls in a separate script just to tell the game what numbers correspond to what scripts. But you know you may as well just put each one in its own file because these scripts are going to be run. Uh, we know when the map is loaded. So yeah, bit Makes of sense. an internal thing there, but okay. important if you're having trouble getting any new AI scripts to work, any future modders watching this, then uh, definitely check that one out. Okay. Then we have yeah a bunch of like a global variables that are setting some attack minimum maximum distances for different ones. Kind of a uh, you know, it's nicer to have all of those variables at the top of the file so you can come and tune them more easily and you don't have to search for them. Inexplicably, yeah, a couple of them have kind of changed throughout the file so that you can see under the no update, register goal, no update line, they're mm -hmm. just setting the minimum distance for attack 3000 to, to something else. Yeah, I was trying to, really understand trying to figure out that. what that is. It's like maybe they want it so that these two abilities can chain naturally together, but uh, I don't know. Anyways. I'm not sure. Something. Yeah, as we'll see, yeah, there's, there's, there are systems for that already. These distances, okay. by the way, are, they're not really used for determining when the attack is possible. They're used for determining if the enemy needs to move forward before using the attack. Okay. Because what we'll see here is that, you know, the game's going to constantly, you know, when the enemy's asking the game engine, hey, what attack should I do next? Yep. It's going to yep. check a bunch of stuff, like mainly how far away is the player. Then it's going to roll a dice. And there's uh, going to be a kind of a distribution table. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then if, once it's chosen which attack it's going to do or which combo, then, then it will decide, do I need to move forward? And if the player is really far away, they, they might also decide, am I going to run forward rather than walk forward? Okay. So that's very, very standard behavior we'll cool. see. All right. Okay. So the main function here is this activate function, the first one in the file. This is the function that's run each time the we need a new kind of plan for the enemy. So, you know, it's finished one attack. It's time to determine what attack it's going to do next. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this is where all the percentage chances are calculated. And it's laid out in a pretty nice way. We have this uh, table called act per R, which is an action percentage array. Okay. And we're going to set, depending on the player's distance, which is target dist, or technically it's the enemy's distance, you know, because we don't know what team this enemy is going to be on necessarily, this character. But usually that's going to be the enemy. I mean, sorry, the player is going to be their enemy. Right, yeah. <laughs> that target underscore e and e underscore zero uh -huh. that's like my enemy number one okay yeah which is going to be the player yeah but if you you know if we set the capra capra demons team type to yours then it might be whoever you're targeting right uh then we call, call a bunch of internal stuff like clearing this common clear param one of those internal functions to just kind of set these arrays to the default values say, like yeah. all zeros and mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. and then we just do a bunch of if checks on the target distance um so we start off with the uh, is... kind of okay, largest okay. distance okay okay so for attacking yeah, if, if, exactly yeah. oh, okay so we're going to determine they don't have to be attacks necessarily they're more actions but right most right, of them right. Are be attacks so if the player i'll just say the player for ease of understanding is, is greater than eight meters away or mm -hmm. eight distance units mm -hmm. then we end up with a 10 percent chance of action two wow. a 10 percent chance of action four and an 80 percent chance of action seven okay yeah and you can see there are numbers missing there. There's no action five or six here. They just decided to cut it at whatever point <laughs> yeah. late and you know, they didn't bother renumbering. So, yeah. Fair enough. So those, so if the player's very far away at kind of this max distance threshold, almost always action seven is going to be used and we'll, we'll see what that is soon. 
but it's I'm gonna a much guess, smaller I'm gonna guess the leap for. attack. Yeah, that would be a good guess. <laughs> or it might even just be a running up to the player action. You might not have an attack. Interesting. But um, yeah, we'll see. And there, yeah, you can see, you know, once we check, is the player beyond eight? Okay, well, if not, is the player beyond four? Beyond four, yeah. And we've got a bit more of a balanced distribution there. And then if they're really close, well, if they're two, and then if they're otherwise, I guess, what would this else run? I uh, mean, yeah, so if, if the player is closer than two. Closer than two? Because yeah, else is... the last thing checked was uh, if the player is further than two, two or further. Oh, I see two or further. Yeah, okay, okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. And only, so action eight we know is a very close range thing because it's only ever given any chance if the player is closer than two distance. Mm hmm. 30% chance. Jump and back. And in fact, I would, yeah, I, yeah. exactly. I was <laughs> going to guess that's, that's probably going to be jump back. Yeah. But, you know, there's always a chance of other stuff as well. This is so cool because, like, I have all of this in a blurry version in my mind, like in order, I mean, I think that's what players get generally in order to learn the patterns and such. Uh, but like seeing it all laid out in the actual numbers here, it's like, okay, yeah, oh, yep, 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 that makes sense. Like playing yeah. out a fight in my head, like to determine like how the AI would function here. Exactly, yeah, and these numbers here, you know, if, if you just want to tweak behavior and chances, all you would have to do is change those probability numbers. Nice. You can see here they um, pretty much always add up to 100, but that's just a convention. You know, the game will, Support. when it's quote, rolling the dice, it will just divide by whatever the total is. Right, and right. that's one of the advantages of using this that's nice. uh, common battle activate thing. And we have this array and the game's gonna add up the total probability. Cool. But yeah, having it set to 100 just makes it a bit easier to understand. Because then it is literally a percentage. So then it looks like down here, we're just assigning each action to yeah, the, exactly. that array okay yeah uh mm -hmm. and you can see so one two four seven and eight are pretty simple we've got this register function that we're just going to attach one of the action functions which are defined below here to that index in the percentage array uh for number three it looks like it's created it's like a very it's like a template it's such a simple thing that it literally you don't even need a whole function for it it's just going to be animation 3002 pretty much it looks like uh oh you mean here oh look oh yeah right right because right, they're creating that yeah. up here just max yeah. okay Dist and the use middle. of local zero is kind of unnecessary there it might even that might be a decompiler thing that it's done there mm. but you, they're just setting um so you can see rather than using the act funk array to register the function it's using this def funk param table yeah which i'm guessing is storing these very simple uh, actions that you don't even need a whole function to define. It's just four parameters there, like uh, distance. I don't know what the zero is. Um, hard to tell when it's zero. And then the animation to use, and then that dist middle, which is going to, it's something about our animation canceling, or if it, it indicates whether the enemy is able to cancel out of a combo, I think, that distance. Interesting. Setting. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, that's, you know, not as easy to understand. I right, the, yeah. the functions, which we'll see below. And finally, after the eighth action is set, or action eight, you can see there's an attack after function, which is this act after adjust space function. Hmm. Again, that's going to be defined below. And that's a function that has a chance of being run after any attack. Cool. And it can be, you know, you can you can give an enemy some percentage chance of giving the player a bit of a breather after any attack. So it's kind of a, a chance to to um, do that, or it might be a dodge or something like that. Nice. So yeah, we'll see all that below. And then the common battle activate is just passing all of these things we've constructed to the game engine pretty much through this wrapper that simplifies things and it's going to add up those odds and then roll the dice and so on and then send off the final function to the to the game cool uh, yeah. and you said this runs anytime that the enemy has is going to choose a new action is that right that's right yeah okay. so it's not going to run every frame or anything right. uh, just yeah it's going to generate an action and put it into the queue for this goal. You can see these AI and goal structures being passed around. They're kind of the master structures for this enemy. So the AI, that's Capra Demon's AI, and it's doing things other than just battle. Right. And then goal is kind of the current set of goals. And that can consist of multiple sub goals, which might involve walk up to the player and then attack. Right. Or, you know, do attack one, then combo two, then combo three. Yeah. yeah. This so is, that's and, a single goal. And this is how I, uh... You know, I like to explain to people, like, when they need help with a boss or whatever. Let's say, for example, Gwen is like, you can always... Just because I, I kind of knew 
how these sorts of AIs are structured. The fact that like he's got an animation and like as he resolves and finishes that animation, he it almost looks like he comes to a standstill for like a, a brief moment and then he starts the next action. And I always try and tell people like yep. that's when he's going to decide what to do. So like if you have your shield up as he resolves his animation, he's going to try and like kick you like for example and that sort of thing. So this is cool to yeah, see yeah. it actually in the script how it works. Exactly. And this is early days, you know, they made those transitions a lot smoother in future right. games right, through yeah. animation blending and uh, better kind of more dynamic canceling and stuff. But some could argue they took it a bit too far in places. Like there's a few <laughs> Elden Ring enemies that just nonstop attack because they're just constantly receiving new goals. Right. But yeah, I picture Gwyn, you know, he, he has a swipe at you and he raises his hand to his ear and he's like awaiting waiting <laughs> yeah, orders yeah, from command or something. Yeah. <laughs> Computer Awaiting please. new orders. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and Gwyn, you know, we'll, we'll see other stuff in here, but there's also, they actually respond if you, you know, if you shoot a projectile, they're going to try to dodge it, they're going right. to, if you try to heal, they'll do a certain attack to yep. punish it, and yep. things like that, which yep. I'm sure you're very used to. Oh, very. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's look at one of these functions, Act 01, that's going to be really simple, and typically these will go up in, into the animations, we'll start at 3000 and go up. So, uh, we're going to check the player's distance again, because that might determine something, though... I don't think it's actually used here. You, see, you can tell they copy pasted a bunch of lines from right. function to function and they, they yep. don't always use them. Yeah, I don't yep. see target distance. Um, then we have fate and that's that's our die roll. Oh, nice. We're going to call the infamous <laughs> function get random int, <laughs> which is another modding meme. Nice. Um, random. And yep. yeah, between 1 and 100 inclusive. Uh, I think it's inclusive. I, I, I think it, you can actually get 100 out of it. Okay. Then we're going to just set our approach distance and dash distance. And you can see it's using those pink global variables that we saw above. So the approach distance, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, that's going to be passed in to this approach act function here, just below. Mm -hmm, An mm -hmm. approach act is going to check that approach distance. And if, 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 we're, if the enemy and the player are further than that distance apart, it's going to add an extra sub goal to this goal that we're calculating right now, which is going to involve approaching to that distance. So yeah, you can tell, you know, you can, if you're slightly too far away from an enemy, they'll walk and then you can tell they hit some exact radius, the approach right. distance, yep. and then they'll initiate the attack. Yeah, yeah. And the dash distance is just two more than that. So if you're even further slightly away than that approach distance, the two extra, then the, the enemy's allowed to dash as well in that case. Interesting. Yep. And okay. then we have an odds for guarding, which is, you know, what are the odds of um, the enemy guarding while they're approaching? And Capra Demon can't mm. guard, so that's always going to be zero. Not sure what would happen if you set that to, to like 100. Yeah, you see the probably some T posing action or something like that. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. And then, then we're actually going to use that fate. Yeah. Exactly. So we're using that die roll to determine whether we're going to do a one hit combo or a two hit combo. Mm. And this is where we're finally adding the sub goals explicitly. Uh, the first thing we declare is the kind of sub goal type. And there's a few different types there. There's, uh, but these are the three you'll actually see most often. We have attack, combo attack, and combo final. Mm -hmm. And I think that tells the game a bit about what sort of animation blending to use hmm. uh, or other things. I don't, I don't know exactly, I'm sure. Someone like me, Amaritus, probably knows exactly what's going under the, on, on under the hood there. But you can see. Do the uh, uh, do the attacks need to be built with the idea of being comboed, or could you just like combo attack, combo a final, like pretty much any attacks? You can combo anything you want, but they'll definitely look better okay. if you know one animation ends where the next is going to begin. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there there might be other ways to do it to kind of you know for Nightfall, Meow Maritus has been adding all these new animation blending functions to try to make the faster combat look a lot better because you know Dark mm. Souls can look a bit clunky sometimes yeah. so again i'm sure i'm sure he knows quite a bit about what's going on, on on under the hood there and how to get two attacks to look most seamless when used in a combo and things like that but yeah in principle I you can set up any combo you want with any attacks that's very cool is there any um any sort of public document or anything where you can see like the the definitions for like these functions so that like I guess in in some cases you you may not even know what numbers do like for a function, so we have extracted those. Yeah. Um, let me uh, poke around to see if they're defined in one of the common files. They might be defined in one of the common function files, or they might be. Um, I was more just curious, like not necessarily for these specifically, but like you know, looking at this, if you're like, okay, I get most of this, but like, what's this ten? Like, trying to figure out what that kind of stuff is. 
exactly yeah that that's if we don't have that kind of readily available like on the modding wiki or something which exists by the way i haven't mentioned that yet um ah. yeah but there's a soulsmodding.wiki.com you can go check out a bunch of resources nice um but if there's no page on there about yeah the the function signatures for these internal functions there should be because that's very useful for ai all right let's see so there's a 20 percent chance that he's just gonna do wait though this was for attack 3000 20 mm -hmm. chance that he doesn't combo right that's right yeah yeah but then when this action cases, is requested yeah which is already part you know we're past the first die roll at this point we're into the action and then the action is free to do whatever it wants but usually it's going to do either a, yeah it's going to do some combo or a truncated version of that combo hmm. yep function act one um and, and then... this function returns uh, this get well space odds which is the probability that there'll be a get well space function after this which is okay uh, give the player a break <laughs> technically speaking oh okay yeah so okay 100 percent chance after this whether he combos or not to give the player a, a little bit of a breather spot yeah exactly i don't know what that breather looks like here but you know setting that to zero versus 100 might be you know, I'm not. I'm not sure what the difference would look like in game because I don't remember off the top of my head how fast Capra Demon, like how aggressive Capra Demon normally is. But yeah, like I can think of a situation where with. he'll finish an attack, but then immediately go into the jump attack. Mm. Um, like I think if you try to heal, maybe. Um, yeah, that would override pretty much anything else. Interesting. Okay. Which we'll see. Okay, so the other actions here are going to be pretty similar, just different animation IDs and different combos. So action two. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is you can oh, see they're so actually right. setting attack ID there. And they're they're okay. calling using that. And it's again, because this is such a simple action, they've used this shared function called approach and attack. This is having a bunch of info passed to it, and it's going to generate those sub goals on its own. Nice. Yeah. So that, again, that's a nice, easy one you can use if you just want to, you know, if an action for you is just an animation, basically, then that's a nice one you could use in any of your own scripts. Hmm. But because the previous function had to decide whether to do one or two hits, we couldn't use that. Right, that makes sense. Okay. Oh, we could if we set it up that way, but by doing it this way, we get to put the approach kind of outside that if check. Yeah. So, you know, obviously there's a bunch of ways you could do the same thing. Cool. Interesting. And then the and next yeah, one the same looks thing the same going thing. on. Yeah. Yeah. Just more animation IDs. Again, Capra Demon, another reason that Capra Demon's a good starter point is that it just has so few animations. So there's very, very little going on in this script, really. He only has like five attacks. Yeah. Um, and then this one, again, approach and attack. And, mm -hmm. okay, this one looks a little different. Action 08. Uh, oh, okay, so this is the jump, I think we determined, right? Yeah, only used uh, when the player is very close, I think we saw. And you oh, can see the, that the, the jump it back. Even use it. Right, yeah. Yeah, um, so you can tell here spin the spin step. step, that's going to be a dodge animation. Mm. And they're in, they're, those are animation IDs in the 700 range. And I think 701 is jump back. 700 would be jump forward, and then you've got 2 and 3 would be left and right. Two, oh, 703. Seven, seven, we have an attack after Oops. that. So it's not just jump back, it's the jump back leap slam combo. Oh, if nice. I gotta be right back. Just one sec. Sorry. I think someone's at the door or something. Be right yeah, back. No Just reading some stuff. Let's see. Oh, thanks, Matt. I'm sure you're posting many very useful corrections and additions here. Yeah. So Matt says uh, it's pretty easy using these scripts to make enemies more aggressive or less aggressive. Yeah. So, you know, just by changing the odds of different attacks, giving the player more, you know, attacks that the player is able to heal after or get away from, you know, those attacks with long recovery and things like that. <laughs> Your top of mind nonsense is a very high caliber level of nonsense, man. So these IDs, I should mention these numbers like 3000 we're seeing those always correspond directly to the animation IDs, but technically they're what we call easy state requests, easy states from soft's state machine code. And, you know, that's going to be definitely not, not a tutorial episode that will appear anywhere in the first 
thousand episodes, I think. One of the hardest parts of the game to mod before you're actually doing assembly level hacks. You can tell that's a jump back because it's AI direction type B. Yeah, right. The animation does link to that as well. Right, Hot Pocket? I mean, 701 is the jump back animation. I think that AI direction type B is telling it, I don't know, something in addition to that. It needs to know, I guess it needs to know which type of spin step it's doing for various other calculations it might do. Hey Grim, are you going to compete in the Modathon? I don't think so, Lekev Dev. Uh, I, I'm always in my own Modathons, but I'm definitely going to check it out. It sounds really awesome. It's really nice cause as well. The more interest in modding, the better. And thanks as always for stopping by everyone. I know, I guess today so far is going to be a little more understandable than the event scripting, which we did last week and the week before, which is typically one of the hardest things to get into. This is at least, you know, this is, we're looking at a real script in a real third party high level language that's relatively easy to modify. So we're fortunate about that. Omar says, how long have you been doing mods? I started Daughters of Ash at the start or about midway through 2017, I should say. Hot Pocket can tell you because it's like the week after he released those event scripting tutorials for the first time on YouTube. That's when I started modding. Zion, I am planning on making my own game. Yeah, I've actually been chatting to Lobos a bit about that because it's a game concept and early design that he is very excited by it, personally interested in. Probably Unity. I do a lot of Unity work at my paid day job, especially in the late leap. So I'm extra familiar with Unity, but I'm well aware that Unity is not necessarily on the best trajectory for future, for the future. And I know there's lots of other great options as well. So we'll have to see. Where would we go on our first date? Jared, is that for me? Oh, well, oof. I think you always, you ask, <laughs> you ask the hardest questions. Uh, there's a bunch of great restaurants in New York, so I'll let you pick. May of 2017. There you go, Hot Pocket. You're on a trip to New York City at the time. Wow, I was in, I had just moved to New York at that time as well. So that's very serendipitous. That's cool. Godot seems to be an up and coming option. Yeah, Godot's, you know, aside from Unity and Unreal, the, the game idea I have, you know, it's a 2D sprite based game. So probably wouldn't need the incredible power of the gods that comes from Unreal Engine. So Godot would definitely be an option. And I think, you know, they have a very nicely crafted off ramp from Unity people into, into Godot. So I would definitely consider it. And I think Godot is open source, right? If not open source, it's as close as you can get with that seeing C code. So that's pretty cool as well. Is Unity want to switch to Unreal? Yeah, I think, you know, Unity's a little friendlier as far as I'm aware. I'm, I'm sure Unreal might be thinking about changing this, but friendlier for small startup projects just to get, and it's obviously a little bit dense, less dense to get into, I should say. Unity is, as far as I'm aware, I've never, never booted up, never touched Unreal Engine. So talking out of my ass here. Yeah, Godot's main distinguishing feature is being not Unity. It's probably a good way to describe it. I wonder if you can say that about Python compared to anything else. Python, oh, you could actually. Python versus MATLAB, if there's anyone in chat who is familiar with that comparison. That's a, a battle of a similar nature, I think, that in my opinion, Python is thoroughly won at this point as someone who's done a lot of both. <laughs> Fuck MATLAB. <laughs> that about sums it up. New York style pizza or Chicago deep dish? Vetti, I have to say I've never been to Chicago, sadly. I've seen a lot of the US since I've been here and I, I love it, especially all the, the natural wonders. One thing about Australia, as beautiful as a lot of a lot of it is, the, the, it has a bit of infamy for being 80% flat red dust, which I can tell you is true, having seen a lot of it. But um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to go with New York pizza based on having only experienced one. I really like New, New Haven pizza over near Yale. They have a lot of great, they have a nice clan pizza. Oh, Matt, you were born and raised in New York. That's awesome. So you've had more than your share of New York pizza. So I'll trust your opinion. 
Especially if you've also had Chicago pizza. Beast of Sin, as a mathematician, I like Python a lot. Totally agree. I love, you know, I, there's very little I would change about Python, and it's so easy to teach people. I do workshops at my work for other scientists who have, you know, either they're either stuck in MATLAB world or they're doing a lot of Excel and manually done stuff. So uh, I can tell you that Python is the easiest programming language to teach that I've found so far. I've been getting into C Sharp recently, like Kev, actually. Uh, a lot of other FromSoft modding tools are in C Sharp, like all of TKGP's tools, Solves Formats Library, Map Studio. All that stuff is great. And yeah, C Sharp is a very nice, friendly language. I've been really impressed with it as well. Very readable and also easy to, you know, I don't have to stop every five minutes and Google how to do something or what the name of some library is. Python versus Fortran for math. That sounds like a mathematician purity test. I won't comment on that. <laughs> have I been down to PA, Delaware, or Maryland? I have been to Philadelphia a couple of times. I was there a few weeks ago, actually. I haven't been deep into Philadelphia. Our work retreat is in the mountains in Philadelphia, not in Pennsylvania, I should say, uh, a lot. So really nice place. And I've been to DC, but I haven't really stopped off in Baltimore or Delaware or uh, other places in Maryland or anywhere like that. Though I do have a lot of friends who work in, in Bethesda at other labs. Uh, the BNIH is based there, the big scientific funding body for the US. So you hear about that a lot. Readability, yeah. Drunk Usurp, I totally agree. Readability, just for sending someone a script. We- Hello. Sorry Hello. about that. I'm back. There was a- somebody at the door and uh, they were trying to sell something and being real uh, <laughs> pushy about it. And uh, I, I, can only, I can tolerate it to a little bit, but then there, he just kept like going, no, but wait, no, no, no. Anyways, we can continue. It's hard to, it's hard to be simultaneously a nice person and get out of those situations yeah, quickly. <laughs> it's true, it's true. So what did I buy? Yeah, I bought his life and I own that man now. <laughs> no, um, okay, so where were we at? We we're just looking through these actions. We're at the jump yeah. back action. We were talking about spin step. Do you happen to know? Because when I asked earlier about the the the, the templates or the uh, definitions for these functions, what the five and the ten are in this case? Uh, it's one of those things I definitely did know at oh, some okay. point. You just um, it, yeah, yeah. Um, it's I'm, I think it's some kind of distance related to that. It's, it sense. might be something like if the player gets beyond that distance, cancel this goal. From memory, that's what it is. Okay, Some, interesting. Something like that. All right. Yeah. You're having fun with Grim. What were you guys doing while I was away? <laughs> yeah, we're talking about a bit of U.S. culture and New York versus Chicago pizza, places I visited uh, in the states. I see. I see. Unfortunately, have not been to Texas yet, outside Dallas airport. But, um, very Dallas high on my airport. List. Yeah, that's a popular <laughs> one. Well, if you ever have a reason to, we've got a guest room, so <clears throat> by all means. Fancy. Yeah. You're in Austin, right? Austin, Texas. Area. Austin. General area. We're in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. So that's Act 8. This one's got a, two sub goals. And yeah, this was just if we're, if it's, what was it, less than two meters distance or something like that? Yeah. This one from memory had a 30% chance of triggering if the player is closer than two. So. Okay. You know, you really get up in Capra's face, it'll probably attack, but, you know, especially if you stay there, eventually there's a good chance that Capra's going to do the jump back, jump leap, back. combo, slam. Yeah. We right. can make that a super slam, you know, we do like, we could add more combos to that, so it does three jump backs in a row and then does this big charge. <laughs> and, you know, nice. Probably yeah, wouldn't gotta... work very well in that arena. <laughs> I got to think about what we're going to, what changes we're going to make here, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, then we have this act after adjust space yeah, thing as well. So this function is run after every other act, I believe. So it's kind of automatically run as a check. And what's it doing here? It's rolling a dice. Two dice. And two dice. Yeah, mm. we've got dice one and sub dice. And you can see it's only doing anything if the first die roll is greater than 80. So that's a 20% chance. Hmm. And then it's using the second roll, or rather, no, it's still using the first yeah. roll. Yeah. So, so it's between first... 80 and 90, yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So you, 
Well, 81 and 90 inclusive, I suppose. But yeah, anyways. Yeah. Um, um, and then, so that's a 10% chance ah. uh, overall, I think we can say, of doing a sideway move action, which is going to be just strafing. Okay. As we call it. And there's a bunch of parameters huh. that go into that. Um, I don't remember what they are either. You can see ah. there's a couple of trues there, some random numbers, oh, probably yeah. about the uh, duration and things like that. Yeah. So kind of like when the boss is kind of idling and he's just like, sidestepping and you, you're like should i attack now and then <laughs> that kind of thing exactly yeah and i think this is the function uh, that get well space odds we saw in previous functions i think now that i'm seeing it again that you know that value that's returned from the action is the chance that this function will be called even though they have different names someone gotcha. in chat might be able to correct me on that but that's the only thing i can imagine at this point so the capra demon has a hundred percent chance of trying you know of rolling these dice but it won't always do a strafe or a, or a random right, uh, right, right. dodge, which is what the second option there is. It's like 9% of the time. And then it looks like the second dice roll is just to determine whether he, he goes left or right. Exactly, yeah. And there return true and return false. And then uh, do they use that at all? Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah. Yeah, if they did, it would be an internal thing. That's okay. just, it's basically returning whether the, you know, whether the die roll was not nothing. So, do you know if, yeah, if all of these functions are by default require a boolean return like i'm not sure yeah okay. it's an interesting question because you know lua is one of those high level languages oh. where you know you don't have to declare a return type so yeah, yeah. okay um, interesting yeah but it, it is lua as well so if a function's trying to read the output it might just be false by default you know or it might be null or the game might crash and your house might burn down <laughs> who, who oh, knows yeah, never know <laughs> Uh, um, then we have, yeah, yeah. Not, not very exciting stuff down here. We see this all the time uh, for the update. So that's the one that's run every frame. And by default, it just continues the current goal. Fair enough. Uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen something else happen in that function. It's extremely boring. And then terminate, same thing. That I've never seen that return anything either. I'm not sure when that's called, but it's one of the magic things you just have to put in your script for the, <laughs> the game to work. Fair enough. Does, and then finally, we have the interrupt, which do, is the coolest. Do you want to ask something? Uh, yeah, I was wondering if uh, so. Goal result continue. Is it is if it's constructed ideally? Is there always a goal? Yeah. So I think goal result continue. I mean, in this case, that's just a variable name for right, some constant yeah. defined somewhere. It's just going to be a number. You yeah. Know, that the the, the engine is going to interpret. Mm -hmm. But um. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm not sure if this update function is only called if a goal currently exists or, if, you know, because otherwise the activate would probably be called if there was no goal at the moment. Yeah. Hard to say. Yeah, those are the deep internals that I'm not really sure about. Because <laughs> I guess because one of the small edge cases I think about is whenever you're fighting a boss and it's very rare, but they just like stand there and sit there. And it's like, is that because they don't have a goal yet? Are they <laughs> like... Yeah, that can happen uh, for a bunch of reasons. Yeah, uh, it depends. If if they don't activate at all, then you know the event script might have stuffed up for some corner case, and the AI was never enabled. But I know what you mean. Sometimes they do stand there a bit, kind of weirdly yeah, long after a combo or whatever. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who knows? FromSoft Miyazaki himself probably has no idea why that happens to this day. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But it could be as simple as one something to do with one of these functions. Interesting. Okay. Cool. Battle interrupt. Interrupt with one R again. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. template, so yeah. you have to <laughs> don't misspell that if you're creating your own new script. Oh, um, I get it, like the eruption of an integer. <laughs> I yep. see. That's oh, interesting. So this function is also run every frame. Uh, definitely, if there's a currently a goal. I'm not sure if there's no goal, but you know that doesn't happen very often. Mm -hmm. And this is you know checking various things to find out if the current goal should be abandoned and a new, typically. Mm um very aggressive goal is uh, kicked into place nice super step super step nice yeah back so step back back step left step right step okay yeah i don't remember what the meaning of step here is oh, wait, I guess... these are percentages i just realized yeah right wait, so okay, the, the okay. per are going to be percentages so i think this is yeah this is determining whether the where the Capra Demon's going to kind of try to do a responsive dodge. And first of all, we have find attack step. We have these parameters passed in. So that's going to look to see if the target, the player, is currently attacking. And it can actually detect if the player is attacking and respond to that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there are yeah, various chances for that. So we have the, um, 
the super step distance. So that's going to be, I guess, the distance within which the player has to be in order to find the attack. And then the percentage chance that there'll be any response at all. So, and then there's a, a block, no back step, not block. And then yeah, the back direction. Step. So yeah. So when you're swinging at Capra, there's a chance that it will pull it, you know, it will do one of these dodge animations, but Capra is so slow that a fast attack, you, you might still be able to hit it. So it's probably not the kind of thing that annoys people very much during the Capra demon fight. I'm imagining super step as maybe, does that mean you have iframes? Like, cause I, I want to say there's bosses where they'll sidestep and they actually have iframes. But then I think like Smo, Smo, you can hit Smo, I think, during his sidestep. Yeah, mm. and you can counter damage. Ah, well, anyways. That, that's all defined in the animation data. Okay. Yeah, just, I don't think that's something that they could change here. Gotcha. But yeah, you have animations. You can set windows during the animation mm -hmm. where there's iframes or counter sure, damage yeah. and things like that. So yeah, it depends on Capra. Yeah. So yeah, we got a find attack so. check and then we've got a damage check. So that's, uh, what's, what's damage checking? Damaged I guess step. If, if Capra was damaged rather than is the player attacking right now. And there's a, there's a safety distance there. So it's like, <laughs> there's a chance that Capra is going to retreat basically after being damaged. Huh. Battle interrupt. So if find attacks, so what are these functions actually doing? Giving it new goals new or something because. Yeah, that's right. So okay. those will do everything. Let me just poke around in some Step. of the common scripts see if i can then return true. find some of these hmm. fine scripts <laughs> they're gonna be. but yeah they're gonna they're gonna both check whether there should be an interruption and then they're going to cancel the current goal and create new goals and then this function will just return because it's not going to check for any other interruptions if one of them succeeds i guess so yeah yeah all right interesting and we also have guard break so if you know you find this often as well if capra breaks the player's guards then it'll you know usually it'll be it'll change to do some quick attacks interesting that's hard huh. to say here yeah, yeah i'm trying to remember this. uh instances of that i guess i guess the main one i can think of is gwyn if he kicks you or in the shield because i don't remember the last time i like blocked and was out of stamina in dark souls one because i just dodged it so much so it's hard to hard yeah. to remember yeah but, okay us you know once you get good enough at the game you don't really notice <laughs> um, <laughs> if you're doing a lot of dodging yeah. successfully you wouldn't really notice some of this stuff as much but um yeah you can see here and there's no sub function called here like damaged step this is all just happening in this function yep and we're checking is the yeah. player close like closer than 3.5 then we have a 50 50 chance of doing attack 3002 or 3003 otherwise we're going to do approach and attack 3004 if the player is further away than 3.5 and when you're adding these together it's gonna it's gonna do both it's gonna do one and then the next one yeah so right. we're queuing those goals okay. in, in in that order cool yeah um, uh, if the guard break doesn't fire then we have a more checks down below with a miss swing so i think that's going to punish the player for oh. missing a swing if the player swings and misses or it might be its own miss swing i'm not sure <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> odds <laughs> miss a... swing attack yeah that might be its own because you know sometimes a combo will be queued but if the first attack misses and the player's far enough away then they probably don't want to continue the rest of that combo hmm yeah because this is all in in interrupt right so yeah so this is being checked every frame hmm yeah oh. and then we got more stuff use oh, item there's use item yeah <laughs> yeah so it, it's going to trigger off basically any item i think you know any consumable is going to send a message to the game engine that the ai script here will be able to read and the chances for that are pretty high you can see there's a 60 percent chance there on the line you're on for um mm -hmm, doing this mm -hmm. response yeah, if you use item, use an item act, then if, if they're closer than 3.5, then we're doing, uh, yeah, attack 3003, otherwise approach and do 3004. Hmm. Yeah, exactly. I can yeah. tell by the way you're reading it that you, you're just seeing through the, the matrix lines here and just to the, yeah, the parts Yeah, exactly. That are, the I have this in my mind, like, I'm like, okay, Capra, I'm healing and Capra's far away. If he's too far, he's not going to do that jump. But if he's there, yeah, he's going to do that. And then 
But then mm-hmm. I'm trying to imagine what he would do. But, you know, some of these things, I guess, aren't necessarily important for the pattern recognition. You just heal and you're like, okay, whatever's coming next, I need to dodge. And then you don't realize it. Uh, I guess yeah. also because this is a chance, right? This is a 60% chance. So it may not even, he might not even do this. But, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Um, we have shoot. So it's responding to projectiles. Oh. Shoot to dist. <laughs> shoot to dist. Not shoot dist two, luckily enough. <laughs> yeah. That's that close. Or is it? Who oh, knows? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it happens. So we've got, let's see, distance. What's res in this case? Re- res. Do you know? Um, res response, probably. Okay. All right. This response, response behavior ID. Yeah. The response behavior ID is being returned by the shoot to dist. Okay. And then that's determining whether basically to do an attack or a dodge, it looks like, in mm. the next section. Okay. So one is, let's see, one, he's just attacking. He's just trying to like attack through it basically. Yeah. Um, 3002, whatever that is. So shoot two discs and we're giving a, so there is a, uh, okay. Uh, what, do you know what odd? Oh, no, wait. Odds res near far, but that's just a percentage. No, it's not a percentage. It probably is. If I you mean, see odds, I, yeah, it's probably going to be a percentage out of 100 okay so we have it okay. looks like shoot two dist accepts yeah kind of two it, it accepts a distance for a near response and a far response and odds for a near and a far response and then i'm guessing it's going to return one or two depending on whether it's a near or far response so one's going to be near and then you can do an attack two is going to be far and it looks like there's going to be a just a sideways dodge and then do we have uh let's oh okay so that's this is the end of the file so do we have shoot two mm-hmm. dist defined somewhere is that in common yeah, that's another common function. Again, there's so many common scripts. I've been digging through them a bit, trying oh, to find... I'm going to pop in there. I'm just going to look. <laughs> Is there an easy way to find it? I can't even decompile all of them. Uh, um, not just through soul structs. Uh, you know, I could do... Right, right, right. If we, you, you could click decompile all. Yeah. And that um, seems to... I'm just testing that myself. Sometimes it <laughs> oh, work. Okay. It's, it's halted, so it's doing stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I, I clicked it um, just a few seconds before you, and I'm, I'm still waiting. It's a race. <laughs> How good's your PC? I'm not sure. Okay. Oh, All yeah. scripts decompiled successfully. Uh, yeah. Kind of logic. So now we can just like arrow through um, mm, the scripts on the left, and just you can see quickly, the name. quickly check. And you can you can do a control F on find. Hmm. What a. I'm looking for ones that sound approach setting attack. Be under attack? No. This is a response to a projectile, right? So Yeah. Common attack pursuit, not spending guards. Common logic. <laughs> no. Huh. A couple of these files can't be decompiled yeah. for a reason I don't remember. So it's probably gonna be in one of those. I think one of them. Okay. Is um, Drift item. one of them contains a lot of the action, but is not easily decompilable. I think we had to kind of really Interesting. do that in a bit of a hack way. Okay, all right. Uh, let me go back to the cap right here. A mystery for now. Uh, which is uh, oh, Nata. There we go. That's right. Okay, and we are here. Yeah, this is really the l- almost the last mm-hmm. piece of code here. Yeah, the other, and the other one is rebuffed by opponent guard. So that's another potential interrupt. Rebuffed by opponent guard. So you, if you successfully block them, then. Yeah, if you block and you know he does the <laughs> weapon weapon rebuff animation, then we might. Uh, I'm not sure what actions that would do, but it would definitely probably cancel the current combo. Maybe yeah. Hmm. So fifty percent chance to respond to that. Mm-hmm. And then his options are step right, step left, or back step. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> so one one phase two could just be all these interrupts where he back steps. Uh, instead, just make it attack. <laughs> right. Yeah. A lot more huh. attacking. And that would be a very mean phase two. Yeah, and uh, I guess. Uh, so let's think. Let's. Is there more to to Capra as the as it is, or is this it? This is it. This okay. is Capra's AI. This okay. Capra's brain. So we've got it. So um, yep. 
So I think the first thing we should do is make a really simple change, like see if we can just get it to only use one attack, just to make sure everything's working. Okay. Um, and we could do that with by modifying the percentages or... Exactly. Um, oh yeah, I guess up here. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what I would do, rather than editing those different distance sections, if you copy one of one block in there, so the, mm -hmm. the, the, the six lines we've set, copy yeah. that below this check, and then just we'll just override them all. after yeah. these are done. Yeah. Let's see. End is end ending the if else block. That's right. Okay. Yeah, all right. That's right. So, so then we can just that. do this here. Oops. And can you shift tab to go back here? No. Uh, probably not. Okay. <laughs> One, three, four. I want it to look pretty. Oh, no. Oh, I guess it'll look pretty after it uh, compiles or, yeah. Yeah, once uh, it, the colors, the recoloring will only be done in my little homebrew program after we confirm. Okay, so what did we say? Eight was backstep, which she's only going to move your clothes. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we can just make him backstep. Then that's it. Oh, yep. Let's that's do that. Good. So just <laughs> step that to 100 and everything else Poor to zero. Step. He's gonna be a backstab boy. All right, 100%. We'll, we'll do this to every boss, and it'll be called Player Fear Mode. <laughs> oh Intimidating my Chosen Undead. Um, I was wondering, and especially for the purpose of testing Capra here, could we also just remove the spawner for the dogs? So it's just yeah. Capra. Yep, sure. Um, um, we could just yes. delete the dogs from the map. That would be the easiest way to do it, or we could go to the event scripts, but. Uh, if you'd never want the dogs to appear, you know, we, the phase two could involve dogs dropping out of the sky or something like that. But yeah, just removing them would be the easiest way. Yeah, there's some point that you mm, that the dogs are activated, right? And you could just remove that, and they would just sit there. Yeah, we so we could do that in event scripts. Okay. That'd probably be a bit more of a sustainable way to do it as well, sure. in case we change our minds later. And then. Uh, let's see here. Commons, uh, uh, flags, Capra Demon Entrance Fog. So we would probably want like to look for, it, this is just me trying to kind of remember in the best mm. the best way to go about it. We, we could look for where the character's entering the fog. Is that right? And then that's where yeah, we'll that, the Yeah, that would definitely put us in the right area. Okay. Uh, this map actually is one of the most boss heavy maps of any game. Ooh. And so this, I, what there's four separate bosses here. We got Taurus Demon, Gargoyles, Capra Demon, uh, no, I guess just three. But um, they all have their own events and everything. So there's, there's, okay, I found Bell Gargoyle stuff. Taurus Demon. Um, uh, Taurus Demon Entrance Fog. Capra Demon Fog Prompt. So, yeah, this so we're is, looking for the 5370 range. 5370. So this yeah. is where you, the character is in front of the fog, right? And it's just going to pop up that, that prompt, probably. Yeah, that's right. Okay. All right, so let's see here. Capra Demon dead. Oh, wait, flag disabled Capra Demon dead. Okay, that's, that's the summons menu. And entering the fight. Yeah. yeah. Boxes camera rotation. Capra Demon combat start. Activate multiplayer buffs. No. That's so, that's like, seems like when we're entering and we hit that box right after the fog. Is that right? Yeah, that's going to send the notification to the summon and apply multiplayer uh, buffs. Okay. And that's it. We've got music activating. Enable AI characters 2240. Yep, that's Capra. Okay. All right. So then. The 2240, very familiar from the event script. I mean, the AI script. Same ID. And uh, would it not call enable AI on dogs as well? I guess. Th if they don't have a special AI, no, because they would otherwise they'd be running up against the fog when you when you're first there. Right? Yeah, uh, if you scroll down a bit, I think it's five three seven six. is what we want. Oh, we can see the dog. We can definitely see the dogs in there. Five three seven. Six. Uh, sorry, not uh, oh nine oh two. Yeah, this one that you're in here. Oh, uh, wait. Uh, oh, I see the event number. <laughs> I was looking for the character yeah. numbers. Okay, <laughs> here we go. So yeah, we've got, um. This is if Capra Demon's dead, then they're disabling yeah. and killing all these dudes. Yeah, so those <clears throat> 3340 are going to be the two dogs because they don't respawn when Capra's dead. This event takes care of all three of them at once. So yeah. if we uh, control F for just that like dog the, yeah, entity one of them. name, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the seven or eight instance. 
Let's see. Was that right? Hang on. What's what's going on here? This. Oh, I've seen. I, I remember this. Yeah. There's um. There's a different set of dogs. That oh. appear after you kill the boss. I think. Oh, that makes sense. That, is, that are still in there, and those do not have the restriction. Right. Yeah, because otherwise, yeah. yeah, they would wait for you to enter the room anyways, and then come and attack you. Yeah. So the dogs, the dogs with the names that end in three and four, are the ones there during the boss fight. During the boss fight. And then yeah. once you've killed the boss, uh, this event's only going to run those first seven lines, and the other dogs are never going to be disabled and killed. They're like the post-boss dogs. Yeah. So the game's trying to convince us that those dogs are the same, but we know, <laughs> we know the truth. They promise. <laughs> uh, so oh, let's see. These this character ID isn't anywhere else in the. Uh, so your parents bring you home an identical dog. <laughs> oh gosh, no. <laughs> um, okay, so yeah, this is where they're being disabled and killed. But I I searched the, the this character number and it's not showing up elsewhere in the document, unless it's used in it differently. Yeah. Okay, well then, the next suspicion I would have is if we go to the map, so we're going to look mm -hmm. at that same name, the one ending in three, and we check whether that dog is a different AI param, and it, it might be handled in uh, that way. Let's see here. So yeah, go to characters. Characters, okay. Oh yeah, so, um, what, what do we have? We have 3340. Yeah. Ooh. All those hollows, the two five zero zeros. A lot of hollows in here. Three and four, right, I think? And then if they yeah, have the ones in the boss. if it has the ID, that's like they have they have an entity ID, which is for scripting, right? Yeah, and we have a name for that number, which is what the script is using. Got you. Attack dog. Okay. So they do have they have the same character ID and AI ID. I think if you just click on one of the other dogs, like number one or two, I think they have the same. Uh, AI ID. Uh, yeah. Diff. Yeah. Wait. A different character different ID. character IDs. But that shouldn't affect AI. That's just going to probably scale the, you know, the, these dogs might have a, their health might be a bit different. Okay, well, Hot let's... says, oh, Hot Pocket says it's possible their detection radius is small enough that they won't see you anyway. Yeah. All right, that makes sense. Okay. So, so I guess they're not handled manually. Let's, but let's pivot here. That doesn't here. stop us from disabling them. Yeah, let's pivot here and just, how would I, can I from this entry right here just break them? Or not break them, but turn them off. Um, probably not, or well, from the map, no, you'd have to delete them. Um, and that, okay. you know, might be a bit too permanent for us, but mm -hmm. we can just go into the event script and add two extra lines to disable their AI. The event, event scripts for, uh, what do we grab here? Their, their AI ID? Yeah, their, their names, yeah. But we can, we can just do it in the event script as well, since we already have some references to them. Okay, let's see. Um, oops. Event scripts, wait. Yeah, so... In that same script mm -hmm. where we just were, we're already in. Yeah, we're in the right one. Yeah. If you scroll back down to that event uh, 0902, the one that ends in 0902, mm -hmm. just below here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where those dogs are being disabled and killed if the fight's already done. Yep. So if we, where the other dogs, the post-fight dogs, ah. are being disabled and killed, we can put two extra lines there, just disabling the AI of those dogs. Oh, disabling the AI. Anything. Interesting. Yeah, because uh, we can also it, just yeah. disable and kill them regardless, right? Oh, we, and they, yeah, we could. We can just disable them. That that would probably be the, the easiest copy pasta way. If you're somebody, cleaner, yeah. yeah. Unless you want dog spectators. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oops. So disable, kill those. Oops. Yep, that should be it. So you can just. Uh, save and kill them too oh yeah you can kill them as well i think i think from kills them in addition to disabling regardless them, just to, to just save a bit sure. of resources yeah <laughs> and then remind really me nice is it colon for comments uh, hash oh hash yeah mm, uh, the, pound, the pound key as americans moving say. dogs for capra testing oh, do you need to close it or no no okay so we'll save Python's one of those languages that is sensitive to new lines, which is there a love or hate feature. Oh, that's in my RC script does that. And I, a lot of low bots just kind of non RPG stuff is in my RC script. And they'll be like, <laughs> what's going on? And it's like, oh, the spacing of the curly brace away from the function name is wrong. And it's like, oh no. <laughs> I don't, Python doesn't care about that. Yeah. So that, yeah, I think. yeah. New lines definitely announce a new statement in Python. Yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, if we just export event script up the top. Mm -hmm. Wait, then... did we... Uh, oh yeah, we already changed 
Capra to have only backstep, right? Yeah. So export event script. Yeah, just the script. Okay. Um, but the AI, I, I'm not sure we actually wrote it to the game. We might have to go back there. Oh, uh, oh, AI, here we go. Yeah. Write to project, is that a requirement? Yeah, I'd start off with that because by default, this text is only kind of stored in memory. So that will dump a text file to our project folder, which is useful. So we can we could edit it with other programs if we wanted. Okay. And and then we want to click um, export this map just in the top right above the find box. Export this map. I promise to Soulstruck users, I will get around to organizing all these buttons a bit better. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that should be done now. Okay. And so now we should see our changes in game. Yes. I believe so. Let's see. We didn't have too many issues getting off the ground last week, so I'm, I'm hopeful that AI is a little bit dicier just because. All right, we still got debug mode here. <clears throat> well, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's helpful. Good. Um, and we start into depths right behind Capra, so that's well, well. Actually, will we have the key to open back? I don't think we will. You can just you can clip through whatever you want. That's you. right. That's right. Yeah. Um, debug walkthrough, right? And then yeah. top one. Here we go. And we should still have our modified uh, default character. We do. That's right. We modified our start point because, well, we wanted to. <laughs> um, how do you? Yeah, wait? we can do this. Oh yeah, left trigger. Wait, left right trigger. Okay, for clipping. And then yeah, we can also. Pesky. Oh, there we go. Yep, 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 uh, yep. <laughs> yep. Lobo That's sound it. effects, of course. Here we go. And oh, nothing reacts to us. We're invisible. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, wait. Can we change that right now from the menu? I don't remember. Yes, okay. you can. Okay, good. So if we hit the back button. Uh, yes. And uh, go to game, and then character or world character manager. Uh, world. Yeah, character inspector. Character inspector. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. and there, and then we'll come back to mm -hmm. uh, We don't want to go to World Character Manager, though. We just want to go to Character Debug in there. Player no dead. Uh, that's... Yeah, sure, we'll keep that on, yeah. but then no update AI on? Wait. Uh, no, no, hide no. and silence is going to turn off. Hide and silence. Yeah, okay. just below the all the all nodes. Okay, let me, let me run to the restroom real quick. One mm -hmm. second. Oh, talk about a suspenseful moment to leave off. I think this will work. So for those who haven't seen debug mode before, you can grab this straight off Nexus. Orcrux restored the debug menu from Prepare to Die Edition for Remastered. Very useful for testing. And yeah, we actually changed our debug default character as well. By default, it's a... Just got a whole hodgepodge of different heavy armor equipped that we changed to the uh, gold hand set. Back to Grimm's Pizza. Yeah, Australian pizza. Yeah, if only that was a thing. <laughs> Australian food cuisine is kind of funny because, I mean, Australia is very multicultural, especially in Sydney. So we get a lot of food from all over the world, particularly from Asia. But, um, you know, you think of Australian food classics, mostly you just get meat pies, pavlovas, sausage sizzles, for those who eat meats. How is Nightfall going? Nightfall's going very well. Uh, okay. I've been working a lot the last couple of days on the NPC scripts. So I don't think I've said this before, but we have, I think, 13 new NPCs in Nightfall, like voiced characters, <clears> which <throat> is, yeah. you know, they, they stack up over development. Uh, we've got voice lines recorded already for a lot of them and we get the rest of those done but yeah writing all the code because i want the ability to edit it quickly it's it involves writing some wrapper scripts that can regenerate all that code very quickly and regenerate the sound packages and things so that's what i've been working on the last few days are my are my voice lines in they are oh snap <laughs> yeah did they turn out okay yeah i loved I... um i think you sent me three different kind of directions and yeah, I remember, yeah yeah um yeah, the one we went with is awesome. It, it's always so cool when you actually put like voice stuff into the game because it's doing a lot of post processing and engine or whatever, like in real time. And it just makes it sound so much better. It's just like, oh, oh, cool. Like, you know, echoey or, you know, whatever. Exactly. 
Yeah, the sound space design with the maps is really nice in Dark Souls, so it fits the vibe perfectly, at least. Yeah. Okay, so, I was so excited I had to run to the bathroom, but this should be Capra Demon No Dogs Backstep Only mod. Ready? With Lobo sound effects. Oh no, he's doing other things. Wait. Oh, he's doing, okay, he's doing a bunch of things. Maybe we didn't, <laughs> well, the dogs yeah. are gone. Yeah. So that That's worked. Good. All right. Let's figure All right, out. Let's, let's, uh, let's get back to the drawing board. <laughs> figure let's out see. what's going on here. So the first thing I'll check is just that it did write to the game properly. So if we just go to the game directory, we can check that really quick. Okay. We so should see one of the uh, Lua BND files has been do this. created recently. Browse local files. Oh. All right. And where are those located? Jeez. Inside Tur script. Oh. Let's go. Ah. All right. Okay. Yeah. Common. Uh, let's see here. Today, 715. We've got this one at 207. Yeah. Looks, okay. So that looks right. right. Looks right. Yeah. Um, now, what else? Can we right click and yabber that? I think we Ooh. installed yabber. We do have yabber. Uh, wait, dot .dcx or just Yabber? Yeah, dot .dcx. Okay. Uh, not, not the DCX one, sorry. Oh. That's just gonna, <clears throat> all that's gonna do is remove the DCX. Ruined. Uh, Yabber. <laughs> that's okay. You can just do it again, yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, Yabber. Yeah, there'll be a folder at the top of the, of this folder there should be. Oh, I gotcha, yeah. Yeah, hides itself. Okay. Um, we got a bunch of battle we... lures. Yeah, so... The 224000. Can you just open that one in a text editor? Mm. Edit with PyCharm. Hold on. <laughs> I thought, oh, there's open with. <laughs> All right, you're going to get everybody on my case again about Notepad. Uh, <laughs> let's see. It's definitely corrupty text, but you can read some of it. Okay. So I think this tells me that, yeah, it hasn't something. Hasn't mm -hmm. written properly because it should be a it should be the decompiled text version that we saw in Soulstruct. Should be readable. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So let's just go back to that. All right. Let's take a okay. peek. I'll just do this on my end as well, so I can make sure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, um, I don't know if I ever clicked confirm changes. Did I click that? I think so, because that that gave us coloring for those new lines. Is we that added. what that does? Okay. All right. Yeah. And we wrote to project. So what's the just proper, right is, let's say I just made a bunch of code changes. What is the proper like button order that we do from start to finish? Uh, right now, you, you'd want to confirm changes. Okay. The compile button doesn't actually do anything. It just tests that your Lua is valid. So okay. we, we can click that just in case. It should flash blue. Compile. Error. Ah. Error encounter while compiling script. Uh, script 24. Uh, no line number, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not, not very helpful like that. All right, fair enough. Okay, so let's, yeah, what's... Well, this is what we changed here, I believe. Uh, ah, man, I wonder. I'm just going to try making the same change that you did. See okay. if I get the same error. This, you know, we might have accidentally pressed a key elsewhere in the script. You never know. Yeah, very true. Which is... Yeah, yeah it works for me when I when I do the same change. So I, it looks like something okay. it, may if, have changed if elsewhere. If we reload from project, is that... A Give us that's a, probably just gonna we we did write our text file to projects so that's just gonna give us the same thing i think okay um easiest way is probably to click um will decompile work again maybe not what we can do is go back to the game folder mm -hmm. and restore the the vanilla one and we can we can bring the ai back to vanilla uh, let's see, is there a backup? Oh, uh... Oh, Matt mentions that it's also possible there's a weird DLL missing. We have had run into that problem in the past with mods, because uh, the, the decompiling DLL doesn't... Yeah, there's a special DLL that the compiler needs, so that actually might be the issue. Really? Even if we're getting an error when we try to compile in... Well, I guess if that's related... Yeah, the... the, yeah. <laughs> the in fact, because I would expect to see the line number in that in that message, so that tells me it might be a silly DLL thing. Hmm. But anyway, this is kind of beside the point, because it should be a text version anyway. We shouldn't need to compile it. That's just a way of testing. So, so I'm going to... Right. And then export. And just check it myself. So I haven't exported AI scripts with Soulstruct in a little while. Opened. Let me... I'm going to try and restore the old file here. 
Yeah, sure thing. And then we'll see if I just make the same changes if it happens to... Yes, I am sure. Now we reload from project, right? After I've restored the old file. Um, the project, you restored oh, the old the one in the game. One. I see what you, yeah, I want to reload it from the game folders. Can I do that? Um, if you go to file, mm. import <laughs> from, or from import game. from game, and then there's a, an import AI option. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can, uh, lose changes. Yes, lose and then if changes. You click, if you click, um, yeah, there you go. Decompile now? Yeah, there decompile it again. Okay. All Unless right. this, this does not compile for you. Oh. Nope. It gives me the error. Okay. Okay, so okay. we'll be a little thing. That should be against, against yeah, kind of not, not the cause of our troubles, but. Cool. I'm just going to write mine to game, export this map, and check if, if I see it. This could be a silly B and D pathing issue. Okay. What we can do actually in the meantime is something really kind of silly. Okay. okay. We can just we can copy this text into that file manually. So that literally we're going to make a Notepad mod. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> I mean that's how I. That was the first things I ever modded were I think. Did you ever play Dark Rain? It was an RTS. It was. Um, no, I haven't. Okay. It was very much like a kind of StarCraft clone. And of course, mm. back in the day, they just had all the files that were just readable. And it's like, you know, attack distance and damage. And I was like, cool, mod. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so, okay, so uh, I am, see. I'm actually, it's, it is working for me. When I, when I write to game, mm -hmm. I do get the text version in the game. So maybe there's something in there that I forgot about where it is trying to compile it. And if it fails, it's not going to write it because it, it thinks you've got a dodgy script. Hmm. So I, I think, yeah, Soulstruck's trying to be a bit too uh, hand-holdy at the moment. Come I on, think. Soulstruck. But, uh, that's what Notepad's for. <laughs> so yeah, we can just copy this into that Yabba unpacked file and then repack with Yabba and we should be good to go. Uh, let me see. Let me make the changes. Um, no. Oh no. I want to make it look pretty. Uh, wait, so the it. Yabber. <laughs> yeah, of course. I know I need to comment this too. Um, this is. <laughs> oh, right. I didn't even make the changes. I just. All right, zero. Uh, we can't use hash for comment in Lua. <gasps> you comment with um, two dashes, two hyphens at the start of a line. Two hyphens? Why is this. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is a comment. Hopefully. All right. Um, 100% chance to backstep mod. And I'll even put a space there. Um, and then we're just copying this into that DCX file. Um, not the DCX one, but the, the, the battle.lua file inside the inside that folder. folder. Okay. Yep. Uh, and it was, t uh, 22, 4,000. Yeah. Okay. And edit this with notepad or whatever? Yeah. Okay. Is it readable? And it feels fitting, the notepad. So if it's not, it'll work with... Yeah, like I said, game doesn't care. Garbled. Okay, all right. Yep. You, you can you can have that. kind of compiled Lua or you can have plain text Lua. And just, yeah, save that. It's interesting. And yep, there you go. Okay. And now you can go back and re repack. Yeah, right click on the folder. And oh. You have, oh. The, you have the folder. Uh, oh, this folder. Here we go. Ah. Yabber. Boom. There we go. 221. Okay. All right. So um, as far as the DLL issue, um, is that something that... Oh, wait. Is that is that more of a soul strike thing, you think? Or is it actually a missing uh, DLL? Let me check. It might be... A, yeah, it is, it is a missing DLL. Oh, it's okay. just the soul strike problem is that I think if it detects that the error is caused by the missing DLL, it should probably just let you export the text anyway, even if it might be a broken script. Gotcha. So, um, gotcha. yeah, that's that's my bad. But I can tell you at least the DLL should be easy to grab if we want to make some more quick updates after this. Okay. But Oops. in the meantime, yeah, you can... Uh... I'll make my run. <laughs> uh, whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's see here. Uh, dang, map loading. Can I make it so nothing... <laughs> There's no... Ah, I don't want Welcome to, to the true depths. Yeah, yeah, the true depths. You might want to load into, directly into the Berg map and then use the warp. You can warp to one of those dogs outside the fog gate. Oh, gosh. 
I, I got lost, so hold on, wait. <laughs> the depths. Tree, I mean, rat attack. Uh, okay, wait, this way. Oh, no. <sighs> also, the buttons. Oh. Load! Oh, my gosh, no! Oh. All right, now I'm on top of the gaping dragon. I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna save and quit and do this again. Yeah. There we go. All right. Speed boys. Whoa, what the? Okay, that was weird. See. Oh no! It's because I, I forgot we were spawning over there. I was thinking we spawn at the bonfire, so that's why <laughs> I was all confuzzled. No, 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 no. Up. Uh, pillage corpse. Nice. Turn this off. Fall into. Mm, ooh, 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 ooh. Great salt. Where is this? Where is this? Just go. Oh, gotta turn this on. There we go. There we go. Okay, now I see where we're at. Clip through here. Fly over to. There we go. I have to turn off the fact that nothing sees me. Kill dog. Kill dog. And. Oh, yeah. Turn that off. Game. Character, no hide, no silence. Done. Or well, AI scripts, by the way. If we make a change, we only have to reload the map to see that change. If it's not in common, I think. Cool. Or maybe if, even if it isn't common. Uh, and you just so we just save and quit and then load back in. Yeah, but of course in debug mode, that's going to put us back in the, yeah, the original yeah, spawn. Yeah. So. Okay, this now should be no dog, capper demon, backstep only mod. I'm going to be the last to find out. Well, I mean... <laughs> there he goes! Wait! He attacked! Oh, he backs up. Wait, is he doing a combo? I... It might be a, an interrupt. Not sure. Oh, wait, I forgot. It's, it's not just the backstep. It, it was a backstep slam combo, remember? Oh, found really? Out. Yeah, so I this is working. Oh, it's working. Yeah. He's, he outsmarted <laughs> us. We, we tried to make Capra Demon Put it afraid. In that... Okay, okay. <laughs> but nice. otherwise, yeah, working. Okay. Exactly. Backstep attack combo. There you go. Um, Carl, thanks yeah. for those gifted subs. I appreciate you. Well, there you go. Okay, now let's, 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 let's. Do something a little more creative here. Let me close out mm. Dark Souls here. Yeah. I'm... So it might be time to introduce a few more interesting functions. And if you wanted, given the DLL issue, we could do this directly in Notepad as oh, well. Yeah. We, can just, we can just copy it in. It's up to you. Yeah. I like that. Although the colors. Hmm. Exactly. The colors. Yeah. <laughs> Make him spin like a Beyblade. <laughs> well, I don't. He doesn't have that ability, so that's a little harder to do, I think. Um, although, I mean, we can make him. You could. I mean, you know, you can just make Use him rotation. play. Yeah. Exactly. Make him play the turning animation <laughs> uh, over and over. Uh, so let's see. Okay. Well, let's go with what what you've you've got to propose here. So if we want to make a phase two, there's a mm. there are many more AI functions that we can actually check in mm. here, including um, current health. That's yep. how most AI phase transitions work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we could have a function that waits for lower health and then changes up the, the dynamics a bit. And we could create some stupid combos like left, right, left, right, left, right sort of swipes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we don't have a ton to work with, of course, animation wise for Capra. But right, right. You, know, you can do swipe, swipe, slam, or you can, yeah, we, we, so, can, uh, we can start with that. Where do we check for health? Was that in the battle update? Uh, well, it's just a function we can call anywhere and we can set the current health to a variable and then we can, you know, condition okay. on that on that variable on that all right. value all right how I'm just gonna I go check to remind myself i'll go check out Torius, <laughs> who uses it a lot in, in his ai script ah right yeah 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 it is thanks risk it it is ai colon get hp rate capital g rate. h and r get hp okay okay uh so are we creating a new function then I'll send it to you on Discord just in case. Um, no, we can just do this check in the in the activate function. 
And okay. then depending on the current health, we oh, go right. to bring Every... you a different branch of probabilities. Right. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wait. Hold on. Uh, your functions. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, because this is happening every time he becomes available for... To, to do something, to like, to perform an action. And he's like, what do I do? And then we, we go through this, and then it adds goals. And then he uses those to... Exactly. Do the yep. fight. Okay, so... On, dis uh, on Discord, I just send you the, the line to use to get that health variable. Let's see here. Local HP ratio. Oh, that's our, uh... That's our variable. Okay. Wait, but I guess... Okay. Even though it does the error, it still does the colors, so that's nice. <laughs> you can just click confirm changes to get the colors. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so now we can use that use that HP ratio, and that's going to be a number between 0 and 1. And we can, you know, if it's less than something. And of course, what the game would typically do is interact with an event script here. And we can actually kind of send a message to the event script and nice. tell it to to enable a flag and because some of the phase you know depending on what the phase change involves the event script will typically have to do some of it like you know with Ornstein and Samo obviously there's a lot of event scripting happening there yeah but, uh, so for us if it's, if it's just going to be a change to attack behavior we yeah. ju can just do it here okay so are we doing a check in the activate yeah that's right because okay. this is when this is the function called to find out you know what should I do what action should I do oh man I'm going to need to look and... at how okay so if HP ratio, and we'll say is, oh God, I need my equals control pace. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll say HP ratio less than uh, 75. Oh no, no, it's it's a zero to one. So point, we'll say 0.5. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, then, uh, what should we do? Let's see. You well, do so, actually so need we to put could... an, a literal then after the if condition, by the way. At the, the very end of the if? yeah okay so we could do this such that uh we could move our block of code that we did just to make this as easy as possible and set mm -hmm. up those actions that way just so that once he's below 50 percent health then he'll just do the back step attack thing yeah 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 that would be a great test okay uh we just have to put an end at the end of that if block end as well. at the end okay yep all right so if hp ratio which is zero to one percentage value less than or equal to 50 percent then we're going to do that thing where we make it so that uh this is uh, if you're just joining us recently this is basically the ai of capper demon and this is checking for his range your his distance from the player and assigning likelihood of different attacks being used so like 80 percent chance to use attack seven 10 percent for chance chance for attack four blah 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 and that changes depending on how far away he is. We're just overriding that to 100% chance of using ability 8, which is backstep and then jump attack. So, if he's less than 50%, then that should happen. Otherwise, he should function as normal. So, let me reopen that AI file. Two, two, four, zero, three thousand. Paste in the new code. Save that. Yabber it. Updated to thirty. Perfect. And let's go. Let's go. Do you just uh, completely randomly uh, out of curiosity? Do you, have you done anything where like? Like, do you know how we could just launch Ornstein and Smo transition cutscene from, like, if, if Kappa reaches 50% HP? Or is it much <laughs> more complicated than that? As in launching literally that cutscene? Yes. <laughs> uh, that probably wouldn't work just because all the assets for that cutscene are in a different map. Right, but I we guess because they're in We could launch uh, the Bell Gargoyles jumping down cutscene. Yeah, because that doesn't use any actual, like, real-time assets. Is it just... Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. We can launch yeah, the, well, the intro to loaded. the game because right. that's just the movie file. <laughs> I don't think there's an event function to play that movie file, the pre-rendered movie. Shame. Unfortunately, shame that. We might want to change our map starting position as well. By the way, if we yeah, we can do that. Running back a bit. That would be good to to refresh as well. How to do? Uh, yeah. Where, yeah. Here we go. We've got Soulstruck open soon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Anything is possible with Soulstruck. 
M mostly. Except, <laughs> mostly. except uh, when you're missing a critical system DLL. Well, critical for this one purpose on Earth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, double kill. So we can set the um, the right. Berg start point right here. We can do that right now. Yeah. Soul struct. <gasps> I forgot alt tabbing is a nightmare with oh, yeah. the full screen <laughs> debug mode. Uh, okay. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Let me let me see if I can remember this. Okay. We want the uh, initialization um, param player no it's not in params dang it it's not a param is it maps yeah it's in maps it's, all right it's we're trying to edit the coordinates of something player starts okay okay yeah um player character boom right there and then we can uh it's the first one we want oh, to change you, that's the first one dang what yeah. are these other two uh that's a good question <laughs> okay. yeah there are other potential starting points in the map Oh wait, I'm we not. We can find hooked. out by warping to the minute event script. I haven't hooked in. If I do this, will it just not work? It will prompt you to hook if you try to do this. Oh, great! So that, that's fine. I would yeah. love that. Yes, hook in. <laughs> hooked in successfully, and it did it. Excellent. Now just save. Export that. Oh, export maps. Yeah. Boop. Cool. And now, if, if we load into map ten oh one, we should be uh, ready to rumble with Capra. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Oops. I'm already here, so I guess if we do save and quit, we should be able to check it. Uh-oh. All right. Okay. So now, again, we shouldn't... I don't think we can take damage. I think it have god mode still or whatever. But regardless, normal Capra until 50% health. Then backstep, attack spam. He's broken. Um, <laughs> I think he's still as old. No? Uh, are you silenced still? Oh, maybe. That would explain it. That would also explain previously why he's only attacking when you provoke him by attacking. <laughs> uh, whoops. Character debug. I am hidden and silenced. There you go. Oh, there we go. That's normal, Capra. Yeah. Okay, whoops. <laughs> those options, by the way, those debug options should not reset as long as you stay inside the same debug playthrough. So if you just don't back out in that main menu too much. Right, right, yeah. I am doing a lot of damage. Okay, well. <laughs> now let's go phase two, baby. Oh, uh, the ult. This is phase two, as as we as we expected. I mean, he definitely phased. The numbers have. <laughs> there he goes. There he goes. So, okay. There's still something funny happening. Yeah, with the. He did a side jump too. With the distance. I wonder if, like, do any um, let's see. If I get over here, will he do it? Oh, thank you. Smoothie delivered. Nice. Across the screen. Not victory achieved. Smoothie Ooh. delivered. <laughs> um, interesting. I mean, so well, this is can... a good opportunity to actually check some debug options we have for inspecting AI as well. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Debug menu. Can't underrate it. Let's see. Or can't, can't overrate it, I should say. Where do we go? Game? So you go into game, uh -huh. yep, and character inspector, world character manager, and then we want to scroll down to Capra Demon. Find Le Capra. E two, two, four, <gasps> uh, in 1001. Bamboozle in, Rat. Not, uh, Wait, was it? <laughs> this is in the depths. We want to go to map 1001, just because the depths are still loaded right now. Oh, you're right. 1001, there we go. Okay. And then he was 2240. There he is. Yep. There he is. Okay. So we go into that, and you can see the white dot that uh, he's currently being rendered as well. Ah. Nice. Now, if we go down to AI, should be an option here. AI, zero, but you got to load them. Oh, no, they're all here. Goal? Yeah, and then go into goal. Whoa. He's confused. He's got a lot of things going on. Okay, yeah, you can see he's Spin step, spamming. sideways move, spin step, sideways move. Different, different, um, <laughs> different stuff. <laughs> Last action, eight. That's correct. Um... Yeah, definitely him. something funky going on here. Okay. It should be more... Um, it should line up kind of evenly to whatever he's doing. Like, as yeah, he's walking, it, it'll say it, approach, and then it'll, you know, change to attack as he gets in range and stuff. It, it's almost... Can you give him a poke just with a fist without yeah, yeah, killing yeah. him? See if, if that helps. Because it looks like the activate function is running in every frame or something, but that can't be right. Hmm... Okay, my guess would be it's the interrupt that is not interacting nicely with this for some reason. Oops, where was that? Uh, goal. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's see. I'm gonna alt F4. Uh, well, no, I'll just save and quit. Yeah, just save and quit. Then you won't have to change the debug options either. 
Very true. <clears throat> okay. Let's go to the AI and track this down. So, uh, let's go to the interrupt. Right. Int eruption. Oh, no, 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 no. I was trying to control F, and that did not work. <laughs> Int erupt. Oh. Oh, is it capital S? Yeah, you need capital S. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. All right. Interrupt. So, get distance. We're rolling. Step. So, to start off, I would just return false at the start of this function. Just ah, skip the whole thing. Yeah. And then we see can if, see if that works. Yep. And ignore return the rest. False. Okay. Oh, I guess we need to do that in our notepad version. Mm hmm. To 4000. Interrupt. There we go. And return false. Save. Go back. Yabber. Mm -hmm. 238 Dark Souls Okay, should be good to check Do not interrupt him, the AC is on He's listening to his favorite boss music Yeah, that's fair <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, our updated Oh, it put <clears throat> us Back here Wait, this is a different spot But Oh wait, it put us at the default Hmm that... Isn't oh. that, Wasn't that the default? Yeah. Did did you just load ten zero or ten zero one? Let's see. I'll load again. Yeah. Ten oh ten zero one. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Right. I think when we exported the map data, uh, we must have lost the change that we made to the depths last time. Oh, hello there. All right. Let's see. And yeah, you can see our uh, silence and hide is off now, so we should get instant actioned. Uh. Oh. Interestingly not. Let me see. Maybe we... Uh, oh, did we bork him by the we, return we false? We meddled too <laughs> much. Okay, I guess we need that interruption to process. That's interesting, though. It, it suggests that you're not allowed to just do nothing with the interrupt. I guess so. I'm curious. Yeah. Something's got to go through. Um, or does it return true? Does this? Can you just scroll down to the bottom of the interrupt? Does it ever return false, or does it always return true? It, oh, there is an else return false. If right rebuffed end. by opponent guard step. I think it will always end up there, just by the nesting of these if blocks. I think it, it has to... Always end up here? Yeah, yep. so just, it's just the way it's been decompiled, a bit funny with the ifs. But um, yeah, so this, as expected, it returns true if an interrupt succeeds, I think. But for us, it's... Mm. Uh, yeah, not, not the way. So, uh, wait. So do we need to return true? Just at the at the top? but I, Or no? I think we undo the return false. And uh, what, what might be happening, so my next guess is that this is related to kind of the way we've overwritten the uh, percentages, would be my guess. Okay. So I think that's simple enough to fix. We just add our phase two check to the big if statement that checks distance. We can put it right at the top. Okay. So the first thing it checks, and then only if this check fails, then then we'll start checking player distance and doing the original stuff. Uh, let's see. If the oh yeah, okay. I was focused on something else. Can you repeat what we're doing <laughs> exactly? We just we'll cut and paste our new section here and put it above the the big if block, just above this. Above this. Yeah. So that way, because right now those action arrays are being set more than once. And the only other Interesting. Uh, theory I have is that it doesn't like that for whatever reason. So, okay. yeah, just paste it above the um, the first if there with the target distance greater than eight. Zoom. And then do we want to just comment out all of this stuff happening or? No, I'd leave that there, but just change that if to an else if and get rid of the end. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. <clears throat> right, because if that's... Okay. Then and then end. Okay. Uh, there's no space between else and if in Lua. Oh. One of those... Ugh. Just one of those... Uh, <laughs> you need completely different Broke brain everything. department. All right. So, yeah, I'll just I'll just copy all this. So we're just kind of integra integrating it more f friendly exactly. <laughs> into it. So the it doesn't write to those multiple times and maybe... 
boring Yeah, this stuff. is the way you would usually write it, and the only thing I can just think is that uh, once the array is set, it doesn't like us setting it more than once, or something like that. Okay, we'll see because if that is the case. you can imagine, if our attempt to reset it returned an error, it might crash this whole function, and so the activate function might never finish. Mm. That, that's what I'm guessing has mm -hmm. happened. Gotcha. Oh, Matt says, I'm not sure if 0.5 is a valid numerical constant. You think they might need 0.5? 0. 0. That part of it seemed to be working, though. Because, it, did, it did. Yeah, it, it, it was definitely changed it. at that half health. I'll, yeah. I'll do this just for the heck of it. Well, actually, no. I'm yeah. going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. Matt. So. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. But this theory to the test. <clears throat> if we run out of other Never. ideas, at the, the, the critical zero might be the last place we look. <laughs> okay. Loading into 10.01. Oh. oh. Uh, Leonardo, it only does recoloring when you click confirm, just to save on um. Oh, right, right. Memory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me see. Am I hidden? I shouldn't be. Shouldn't be. No, hidden. that is dogs. Uh, oh, yeah, the dogs is actually true. Right. So that's a good test. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, just you might want to also before you enter or while you're into this one matter you can you can put the ai goal on the screen for the debug oh. so you can see you can see what's happening during the normal part as well well let's see if it, if it stops working yeah sure all right one more hit oh wait no yeah he's he's normal all right buddy back step attack back step Okay, it's looking Attack. good. It does. He did have some... Yes, he's got still got a bit of hesitation. But let's pull him up and see what he's doing then. A uh, game instance... Nope. Charmaine, 1001. Oh, wait. No, no, no. That's the main character. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Go down to AI. Goal. And then... Oh. I hit back and I can play like normal. I see. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's just, okay, there we go. So. Spin step, common attack. Yeah, and you can see the changes. So you can see that Q appearing there, right? So we get a spin step, spin step and an attack, and then the attack spawns another sub goal called common attack. Okay, here he gets stuck. It's like when he's turning to face or something. Or. Mm, yeah, it's I interesting. It's like spamming. This might just be one of those, again, the, no, the AI exactly. system is one of the dodgiest systems in the game. Definitely one of the most painful, so we may never get to the bottom of this, but I imagine this wouldn't happen when you're not trying to spam the same animation over and over. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. You can see the life just isn't going down for the spin step, which could be because the activate function is running over and over for some reason, and it just keeps kind of restarting the, the goal. Oh, or I see that life. Oh, uh, like okay, okay. Yeah. So some, I, I imagine it's to do with the activate goal function. So the sideway move made it there. So maybe yeah. it is part of the interrupt. So that that's the interrupt. Okay, behavior. okay. That's what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I think you have some divine blessings equipped. I wonder if, if you use those, if you can yeah. snap him out of it as well. Let's see. I mean, he's still doing that from over there, so. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, most, it mostly works. Yeah. And he's ignoring range and all that. We just told him, yeah, just exactly. do it. This is what you do. <laughs> this is your life now. Yeah, exactly. If Dance. He's, if he's far away, he seems to be fine. Like yeah, that's why going. I do suspect it's a weird interaction with the interrupts because mm. when you're close, um, you do get, I think, a, a more of that happening. Yeah, and then the interrupts are also percentage based, so he won't do it. He won't break every time. Like, exactly. Yeah. Say. So hard to tell exactly which one, but it looks like. When he was glitching, you can see the sideway move goal keeps trying to pop up. Yeah. So it's like something to do with the the spin step and the strafe goals right. combined or something like that. Got him. There and then go. there was yeah, also you can a see yeah spin flickering step, up sideway spin move. step and sideway move. So the interrupt is definitely causing something. Interesting. Oh, Hot Pocket says it seems to be a problem when he doesn't have enough room behind him to do the back step. Well, I, I, that, I'm not sure that happened just hmm. then. It could be it could be do something to do with that. Because uh, we don't know what the spin step sub function is doing exactly. It could be doing a distance check. So you never hmm. know. Interesting. Let me see. But that would normally be the case. Cause oh, there he goes. Chance. I'm going to see Snap if I can like, face him. 
<laughs> That's interesting. And where would yep. be, uh, I guess that that data for that like needs enough room behind me. That would be an animation data. Is that right? No, no? it would be part of the AI check. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure that's, yeah. I mean, you can imagine, I guess it would make sense normally because normally there's always another option. So if, if, if the check does fail, hmm. it will keep, you know, it'll do this glitch, but it might only do it for a few frames until another behavior is selected. But in this case, if something goes wrong with the, the, the pre-check for the, for the dodge move, then uh, it could cause that because it's the only thing he's allowed to do. So yeah, I think that's a pretty huh. good guess at this stage. Interesting. Anyway, I think, do you want to code some real phase two action here? And we should be able to... Let's do it. Let's do it. Avoid the, the curse of the... <laughs> of the Conforming the, the yeah. dodge, the forced dodge. The poor guy gets stuck. Okay, yeah. let's... I'm going to revert the change. We can keep that set up um, okay. for the phase two. But I think what we'll end up doing is having a nested if block here. Okay. And then we can... You know, because during phase two, we still want to react to the different distances. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and then, so yeah, we, we can nest all of those within here. So what I would start by doing is copying all the if checks below and that just copying those into that HP ratio check block. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, starting from there. Yep. Uh, let's see. But this is, are we making a separate if? And for Yeah, we're going to do a nested if. Yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. If and all programmers know that everything is if statements. Oh boy, <laughs> nesting! Yay! All right, let's see here. We can delete. Uh -oh. We can delete the um. Oh, it's, dodge wait, we don't lines as well. Oh, we do want the end though. Which ones? The force dodge. Uh, the force dodge. Force back step. Yeah, that uh, it's gonna be, that the indentation is gonna be a bit painful here, unfortunately. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we we get it. Uh, yeah. Um. Okay. So now we've got all of the same normal activity that he would have, yeah. but we're checking so, first if he's under 50%. Exactly. Health. So now we can modify these values, and these are the ones that will run if health is below 0 0.5. And then we've got a whole separate branch for phase one versus phase two. Yeah. Um, first thing, yeah, it might be useful to know which action is which exactly. Yeah, that would make sense. Um, so we know... I mean, I, I can just tell you for these. Actually, yeah. I'm going to boot up. I'll boot up Anima Animation Studio, which oh. I think it's tempting to boot it up today, but we probably want to save that for it. That's fair. Yeah, like its own whole thing. Day. Yeah. Yeah, but I can play that for us. We know 3,000 is just one hand right swipe, and 3,001 is left hand swipe. Okay. So one fun thing we could do, if, depending on your definition of fun, is to create a phase two attack. That is just like you know, ten swipes in a row or something yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, just like yeah, three thousand and three thousand and one. Yeah. Uh, okay, so wait, so let me see here. Would uh, we would be making our own functions for this? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And you can just copy an existing one. You can. Okay. So we can we can make Act O nine. Yeah, Act O nine, and this has. A multi sub goal being added. So let's see here. Let me do this. And then uh, we, we're adding another uh, entry into the, the array here for act exactly. percentage. Okay. Yeah. So, and does it. Okay, so I mean, I don't know how it works in here. Is it a defined size, the array? No. No, you can. No, okay. it's not. All right. Yeah. It was a so higher just, level than that. Okay, we can just do this. That's good. Yeah. And I need the equals because I can't copy pasta. And I think it will default to zero. So we don't have to set it to zero for all the phase one checks below this one. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay. Um. So let's say, I mean. <laughs> you just gave me the idea of if, if we did this as a long range attack, it can be like, you know, Bart and Lisa wheeling arms at each other. <laughs> it just starts <laughs> yeah, swiping yeah, yeah. at you across the room. <laughs> yeah, I guess we can be. Uh, well, I was thinking for the purpose of. You know, just testing. Make it pretty likely to happen. I guess we don't need to do it at, at max yeah. range. That can be that can be normal. Um, we also have more options. I mean, you know, sometimes maybe we only want this attack to happen once at the start of phase two. 
and we can oh. do that you can just you can have a boolean yeah that you know is set has, to true after the first time yeah it has flurried or some shit and exactly interesting yeah. okay yeah i mean so yeah if you if you know if, if you have a condition and when it's met then don't do thing again or if just with with the condition stuff there's so many options you have for when things happen and, and exactly how they happen so I, now I, if you do want to store just just to, on that note if you want to store kind of permanent information in an ai script you mm -hmm. can't just create a local variable you actually have to um use oh. this functionality called set number oh and that's there's basically a bunch of slots and you can see them in the debug menu it's just a way of storing a few numbers i think there's either four or eight of them that you can store and then those are what you can check and you can use those to record they're like I mini mini flags okay and those get stored in as when the map loads yeah exactly like they'll go the, reset when, you know, when, when the script starts yeah okay. and you know they'll be different for each instance of the enemy with the script whereas if we use a global variable then it's going to probably i've never tried it but i think it would be shared by all the enemies using that script makes sense and so only only one capra would get to do phase two in that case ah huh you mean um you mean if it was something that we were changing yeah exactly I, I get, I get so you're saying yep in the example where you want to only do this attack once, then we'll have to use one of those numbers to remember that the attack has happened. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. This is the nested if. That's why that end is there. So... Yeah, it's not indented. Okay. All right. So uh, where were we making a, a variable if we wanted to do that? So um, we don't really need to make it. I'll just send oh. you the code for or there we go oh that's right you said it was like a, a function yeah special ai colon set AI number set number and then the first number is the slot and the second number is the value that you want to write to that slot we um <clears throat> let's see i guess so, so what the, we want to do the slot already exists is that yeah that's right okay so we can already check it and it should be what negative one or something or zero or yeah so basically all we want to do here is at the start of our nested if block mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and let me just get the other number that we want to check yeah yeah you want to use this one sent to you mm -hmm. so before we do any of our nested distance checks we'll do this check that i just sent to you so we're going to check get number zero. Let's see here. Oh, whoops. You before the, the nested ifs begin? Yeah, so kind of before that checking, before comparing the distance to eight. So we're going to change that to an else if. Uh, before comparing to the, we're, wait, we're we doing else if? Why are we yeah, doing so we want, to, there? we want to extend our, our if block up by one. So the first thing we want to check, you know, we're checking is health less than 0.5. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we want to check, is this number zero? That means we haven't done the special flurry yet. Right. If that's not true, then we'll go and check, is target disk greater than eight or so on. But we don't care about the distance for this for this function. Okay. For this one-off event. Uh, oops. So we want to write if AI get number zero equals zero. Oh, okay, 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 okay. If AI the get number zero equals zero, right, right, okay, I get what you're yeah. saying. I, yeah, I thought you were we were just throwing away all of our nested stuff here. No, but, no, no, okay, all right. If it is zero, then that means that we have not used this attack yet, and then yeah. what, we would just want to set it up so that he's got a hundred percent chance to use it or something. Just yeah. So just to be clear, we'd want to copy you know all of those array slots and set all of them to zero except nine, which right. would put us one hundred. Right. right, that makes sense. Um, Oh, oh man oh, wait can you tab oh you can tab oh good tabby tab tab all right so we set this to 100 and then all these to zero and blah 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 so basically yep. once the answer enters phase two uh, i need we didn't even end right at the end of this if yeah you need to then i uh, know uh, we don't need an end uh we want to just make an else if because if if this check works we don't want to do all the other distance checks. oh that's true yeah yeah yeah, and yeah, so. just said then after the get number check. The old then. Okay. Uh, if you click confirm changes, by the way, we should get some some nice coloring here. Which. Oh no. Hacked. Okay. If HP is less than, well, is fifty percent or less, 
And if this number, this arbitrary slot that we have control of and can read and can write to, if it's mm -hmm. zero, which is the default, then he's entered phase two and he's not used his insane flurry attack, which we haven't made yet, but we're, we're, we're going to. Yeah, exactly. And then at the end of this, we need to just set that number to a one or something like that. Exactly. I would probably do that in the action function, action 09. Oh, okay. Once we're actually but doing it. it. Yeah, gotcha, exactly. Gotcha. Just in case the, the, you know, it doesn't work for some reason. That's fair. That would be disappointing. <laughs> so we're going to go down here. We copy pasta an existing attack that he's got, which is mm -hmm. action 08. This was the back step and, uh, and jump attack, which we made forced him to do. We're going to change this to 09. Um... We're getting the target distance. We're rolling a number. I don't think... Might not need to do either in this case yeah. if we're just going to spam combos. I I think uh, I think we should do a distance check. And then mm -hmm. if we're at a distance, then out of range, then have him run up. Yeah, sure. So that would add a sub goal, right? For an approach and then... Yeah, I would just copy that from one of the previous actions. Okay. Like action one probably has it. Oh, there's approach and attack. Um, in fact, action one's probably good, given that that's the that's the animation I think we're going to use for this act, flurry. Action so, one, yeah, God, gotcha. act one. Oh, act one, yeah. Um, let's see. So that's the that's the chance. Yeah. In fact, this this might be a better one to just copy, and then we can um, add stuff to this, and we can keep Very all these parameters well. the same. Very well. O nine is here. We've already got the target distance. Oops. <clears throat> I'll do that. Blah blah blah. Confirm changes. Colors. All right. Good distance. Just, just get rid of that extra end at the bottom. Oops. We'll have a, yeah, have a bad missed, time. Missed that one. Uh, so we don't need a chance. We're we're gonna make this hundred percent. Then we've got a distance max, and then dash distance. So that allow him to run if we're, he's really far away. Otherwise, mm -hmm. he just approaches. Odds guard equals zero, but we're not doing anything with that. Can remove this. Um, and <clears throat> uh, combo attack, and then final. So now we can say, <laughs> do like seven right hand attacks and then end with a left or something like that, right? Like Yeah, we can just... For, just for visual niceness, I'd probably alternate between them, which kind of works nicely for Capra. Mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. the each one flows into the next. Well, I, I'm going to do a little bit of the former and a little bit of the latter. Yeah, I'm you, can, do, you can do whatever you want. That's right. I can. <laughs> it's like I'm a, in control. Like a quick time event. <laughs> this is my mod. All right, so we're going to have a total of five attacks, and he's going to he's gonna do what? Right hand, left hand, right hand, right hand, left hand. <laughs> All right. Okay. And um, We just want to change the non-final ones to the, use the combo attack type as well. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Right. Not exactly sure what that does, but I, I think it will make things work for us better, at least. I wonder if that. Well, I guess, like the I thought maybe it would be related to get well space, right? Like giving the the player a breather, but I don't know. Who knows? Not sure. Yeah, my my suspicion is to do with a uh, animation blending. Okay. But yeah, it'd be, it'd be really cool to know that kind of stuff. Fair enough. Oh no okay, no. Okay, this. Oh wait, I just control S. Um. That's okay. Yeah, that's yeah. That's a shortcut for confirm changes. I thought it was gonna do the. Oh okay, confirm changes. Gotcha. Yeah, I think it also writes to project. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Someone must know. We should find who made this program. Oh yeah thing. yeah. I'm gonna give them a call. And... <laughs> All right. All right. So approach act that's built into here where we've given them an approach distance and everything. So he's just going to run yeah, up and, and, it, and it matches for the animation. We want 3000. Yeah. And once he's in range, he's just going to do this. And then according to our code, uh, oh, we need to set that number. Yeah. Set that yes. number to one because he'll yeah. otherwise he'll just keep doing it. Um, so let's go See, in. Very similar that. syntax. Just uh, add the new number as the second argument, the number that you want to set it to, and then change it to set number. Uh, wait. Uh, set number. Oops. Yeah. And then oh, zero right. comma one. Yeah, zero comma one. Number you want to set first, and then the value. Yeah. Okay. And just set. like that, right? AI colon set number. Yep, that looks good. Confirm changes. Okay, cool. We're gonna copy all of that. 
So now, once he reaches phase two, he should he should do this super attack that we've made, and only do it once, and then he should go back to his normal AI. So, mm -hmm. let's go see. Oh wait, I gotta repackage this. Yabber. Cool. If you missed the stuff with Yabber, by the way, I don't. I think that was second episode of our modding, maybe. And um, yeah, that just kind of helps us unpack and repack these game files so that we can edit and read them more easily, and then the game can read them as well. Shouldn't that green end not be there? Well, let's find out. <laughs> maybe everything. I think, broke. I think it was okay. Okay, but yeah, we'll find out. We'll find out in um phase one because if there was an extra end or something the entire file will have broken syntax Ooh. let me so yeah since we restarted the game yeah. we've got, got our defaults again ow 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 uh let me pull up should we be able to find him easily yeah we can find him easily in the ai right now or i mean his uh his character instance here yeah definitely boom yeah. Oh, he's already rendered. Yeah. So, boom. Even, yeah. even easier. Pull up the AI. His AI is off right now. But this will allow us to see what happens. He's broken. Wait. Mm. Life minus one battle. Did we, uh, maybe we messed something up. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, do you want to copy paste that script into Discord? I can compile sure. it on my end and make sure it's valid. Sure. Let me see. I should still have it on the clipboard. Uh oh. Boop. Your message is too long. <clears throat> oh. Uh, that's illegal. I. <laughs> let's let's take a Maybe look. Maybe just you can send me the text file. Was there an extra end at the bottom? Did I? Let me see, see that right. Uh, when I pasted, yes. Now, let me open that file here. Yeah, the I think, very uh, bottom, bottom. Great Graham cake is right. End, yes. in, end, 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 return. Uh, I mean, that looks okay. And we didn't change anything down there. Do you want to send that file to me? Just drag sure. it into Discord. And sure. I can paste that. Uh, let's see here. Dixord. Grab that. There we go. Batalua. Oh, did that? Oh, that send? worked right. Did you you sent it? Did it? I send? haven't got anything yet. This is weird. Just just what press the enter and they, they should go through. Yeah, I think I, you tried to paste a lot of text, so I guess yeah, it, it turned into a yeah. message. Okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, let's have a look at this. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. End. Oh, oh, this end. Yeah. What is this end? Yeah, I, I am not, getting an error. That's not supposed to be there. That's the one that you're talking about. Yeah. So that, that's the function end. Oh, oh I, see, I, see, I, see, I see, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the, nice. the indentation there made it look like the end was okay. But, uh, <laughs> yep. Nice catch. I think I think whoever caught that. That's right. Someone spotted it. Uh, ye oh, I did save. Yabber. And, yeah, when I run my compile with the DLL, uh, it tells me which line. It, it says that's nice. expected near end. Yeah, that's so nice. a bit easier to figure out. I hate this game. Thanks for that, Prime Sub. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're trying to mod it into a better game, so hopefully you enjoy it. Well, maybe not better, but different. This for you. That's right. Get out of here, dog. Oh, that dog wanted nothing to do with you. Yeah, right. He left. Okay. Uh, oopsies. Did I aggro more? Probably. Who cares? All right. Let's bring up Capra Demon's AI. Yes. Um, a I goals. Just keeping keeping tabs on Capra's goals in life. <laughs> What's his top goal? Nothing. Stand Ooh. in small room. All right, so here we go. We can see his AI processing. This looks good. Let's push him to face two. Those. Look at that. He did do. So you're telling me, anytime Capra does a back step, he's doing the leap. <gasps> Yeah. See, I didn't. Oh no, not not any time. There was oh, an interrupt. Oh, like an if you interrupt. Ride in space. Yeah. Okay. So but as an is. attack, yes. Here we go. One. Wait. Two. No, I don't think he did it. Wait. It might have been interrupted. 
Ooh. Yeah. Ah. Capra, if you we, fool. Um, <laughs> if we reload and try again, uh, we should see when he starts it, mm. all of those goals. And we should also see the numbers change. You can actually mm. read the, the special numbers in that script too. So we should be able to tell if it at least... Oh, oh I know what we forgot. We never loaded Act 09 into the, I was, the array of functions. I was wondering about that, actually. Yeah. So... <laughs> Someone might have mentioned that as well. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, the game, we, we defined a cool new attack function, but unfortunately, uh, no one cares. <laughs> yeah, we didn't tell what it means. Okay, where do we do that? Uh, it'll be just down below this in the act funk array, where you see those regist funk. So yeah, just copy the... Uh, Oops. Uh, not that far, just at the last, at the end of the activate function. So about a quarter of the way down the file. Oh, the activate function. Oh, good. Yeah. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Act funk array nine. Okay, I need to copy that. I'm just gonna do this. And all we did was we so we can name these whatever we want. It's just we're doing yeah, this. Yeah, so you it's, can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So just not to the act zero nine into function array slot nine, and yeah. yeah. Okay. So now yeah, that'll actually good. exist. Weird. All right. <laughs> save um yeah i wonder about interrupts though that is a, all right we'll see <laughs> you'd feel like immune to damage until fight actually starts as a blanket thing from should do hmm do you have any input on that as why it might not be a good idea Grim. um i'm i'm not sure yeah obviously especially in the earlier games it's a lot of exploits associated with hurting bosses while their ai is disabled uh, I think I would, yeah, in any mod, I would certainly lean towards just making them invincible mm. uh, before the fight starts, if they're standing there at all. I think in later games, a lot of bosses only appear once you enter the room, uh. so they got, they got around it that way. <laughs> I think Miyazaki is, he doesn't like the lack of realism in an invincible boss standing right, there. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think uh, in some One cases, theory. like, maybe they're just like, yeah, you could do this. Like, for example, mm -hmm. the... Um, Dragon Rider in Dark Souls 2, and you can just look over yeah, and Yeah, like, right. Wow, he's right there. Can I shoot him? I can, and that works. Yeah. We designed the arena this way, and yeah. I think it's more fun to be like, oh, I found this out and made it way easier instead of like, ah, uh, they guarded me from doing this. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I think firebombing Capra is one of the coolest exploits as well. So. Yeah, it's so cool. I like that it works. All right, here we go. Combo repeat, combo final. Let's see. All right. Uh -huh. I see them there. I see them in the list. Yeah, it looks good. You can see them chugging through the queue one at a time. Oh, the queued, huh? Interesting. Combo Although, repeat. Combo final. No, set number. The one. first number is still set to zero. So I don't I don't think I'm I'm not sure if he ever did it. I think it was a different act. Okay, repeat. Yeah, I'm not super <laughs> I'm not familiar with like watching these <laughs> pop up and figure it out. Move to somewhere. I like that. Doesn't seem like it. So set number that that array over there. The zero 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 zero. That's that's what those are those numbers that we would modify. Yeah, exactly. And the, we're not seeing it set to one, so True. that suggests to me that um, our new action True. didn't run after all. Let's see. Yeah, let's we can take a look. Yeah. Make sure. <laughs> yeah. Go. All right. Huh. We didn't yabber it. Are you serious? Wait. If I didn't yabber it, then wasn't he breaking? Oh, uh, yeah. The fact that we're in this folder suggests oh. Oh, that yeah. Uh, yeah. we weren't seeing anything new. <clears throat> Catch. See, we're just going through all of the different, you know, things that can happen when you're trying to mod and yeah. why things won't work. And again, that, that yabber step is normally, hopefully, would be, especially mm -hmm. after the next full start update, would be taken out of the, uh, the array. Of these. Okay. Try again. No, no, no. I mean, can, can you watch your player's AI? <laughs> That's that'd be weird. I'm not sure that would. Yeah, I'd, I'm not sure you'd see anything pop up. Just mind reading. That's pr probably illegal, honestly. But <laughs> all right, <clears throat> there he is. Did it say attack tuna? No, I think it was turn. All right. Okay. Here we go. You can do it. Mm. 
He was still doing that. There it is. One. Two. Wait, well, I don't know if it's happening yet. Yeah. Yep, I, Three. I saw the number change. Do it right again. Yep. Yep. And then here comes final. Boom. And then set number one. Yep. There it is. Awesome. There you go. And he'll that never works. do it again. <laughs> but that was phase two. Capra got a sort of super ability. Phase two transition. Now, are is there are there any ways of real time modifying like a, a character's speed? Uh yes, there is. Yeah. Would you like to do it? That, yeah. Maybe that can be our final final phase two edition. Yeah, I would love to do that. Okay. All right, let's do it. This um, something funnily enough that only works in Dark Souls one. Really? Oh, yeah, no. we actually ran into this um, recently because okay. uh, Distortion asked me to make a mod where all the enemies, I mean, he used enemy randomizer to replace every enemy with a with a big ball, the silver balls, <laughs> and he wanted to speed them up. <laughs> but uh, right. not yeah. as easy in Elden Ring. We had to do it through animations. But mm. in Dark Souls 1, there is a special effect that multiplies animation speed by whatever you want. as in a, a special effect field. So do you do that for every, uh, like, animation that's going to happen or and in dark souls one we don't have to all we oh. have to do is create a new special effect with an increased speed field and oh, then see, in I event see. scripting we'll apply that to capra when when it falls below half health okay so so then that, that's a param right we're going back to day one learning yeah. special <laughs> effects here we go school putting it all together so, so yeah what is a what do you think would be an effect that would have a similar kind of build to it that's a good question um <laughs> we have over the years it's it's one of those things you always kind of it's the work you redo when you start a new mod finding the good templates for mm. these params mm -hmm. uh, number zero might be all right it is just called test if you just have a look at zero okay um, uh, was there a way a, I, I forget to to load names for these differently or no not for special effects no oh, these oh, would okay. all just need to be manually translated okay yeah all right let's see but these are names that came in the game at least Let's see. All of these numbers are zero except. Oh, animation speed multiplier is grayed out. Yeah, grayed out just means it's set to a default value, okay. which is one. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but I, this looks like a good template, so yeah. I think we could we could copy copy zero. Okay. Uh, if you right click and duplicate to next available, available ID. ID eighteen. There you go. All right. Obviously, you know we'd probably. I'm gonna name this Pick something a bit more. Yeah, yeah. Speedo. Name that. Speedo. <laughs> uh, all right. Animation speed multiplier. Yeah. Three point zero. At three point zero. That sounds very fair. And if you just hover oh. the mouse over the name of that field, animation speed multiplier, you can see the real internal name mm. for, the, for it, which is another big name. Gra gravity. Yeah. Gravity <laughs> yeah. rate. Gravity rate. Interesting. Cool. I think Hot Pocket just said, uh, "Time to get gravity." Time to get gravity. Yes, nice, yeah. perfect. But uh, after Dark Souls One, that field apparently stopped working. So they, ah, shame. They were they were onto us. Our gravity shame. shenanigans. But yeah, and you can do it through animation data. Okay, so effect with ID eighteen is what we want. Yes, yeah. that's all so we need. Let's, uh, that's all we need. So let's save and export params, and we will need to restart the game to, to okay. get those. Okay, save params. We'll go put params. our event script change in first. Close game. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> And um, then let's go to event, event scripts. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, and, and there's a bunch of places we could put this. You know, if we were being proper about it, we'd probably make a new event just for this quote, you know, phase transition. Yes. But for our purposes, we can chuck it in any event that's going to be like even this Capra Demon dead event, because that's where it's checking that Capra's health is zero. And one thing that has to happen before Capra's health is zero is that Capra's health is less than point point five. So we can just put it right below that line you're on right now, below those um. Hmm. The, the second set of dogs. Okay, I have a request. So what mm -hmm. I would like to do is specifically only speed up our super attack. So Ooh, it, like, okay. call that script like in, I guess it would be inside mm -hmm. that 09 function and then like yeah. also call the script to turn it off after that. Or maybe you just it, you, we we check if the script's run and then it doesn't do that anymore. Or I guess it yeah, would we, do, yeah. Yeah, okay, that, that's great because you know, that's going to force us to do this properly and not take the easy way out. <laughs> so I think in that case, we do want to make a new event just to handle this phase mm -hmm. transition. Mm -hmm. So I would look for the, the next 537X event ID that hasn't been taken. Possibly uh, 5376, five, I think. Three. Looks like it might be free. Uh, let's see. Wait, where are you seeing those numbers? 
Uh, just I just saw the idea of above. So event 0902 is waiting for Capra Demon to die. Just okay. above that was 5375. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. All right, so... Uh, 5376. This is kind so of template stuff good. right here, right? Like. Yeah, we can copy this and kind just of delete thing. most of the uh, events. Six and six and six. And then... Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, now the first thing we want to do in here is... Uh, end if this event flag enabled okay because this doesn't once cap uh, once um actually no we want to end if capra is dead i think so we can write end if flag enabled and then we can mm. put the common flags capra demon dead is it in there. like this like e i f e first letter all capitalized end yep. if flag enabled yep. and, that's it and then uh what's capra dead right below it you can see the name of it Literally, it's the next common event flags. Dot Capra Demon Dead. Yeah. Okay. Because you remember last time we saw that a lot of bosses have very low flags that record their death. Mm. That's only for major bosses though. Capra Demon gets no such honor. He's mm. got a big eight digit death mm. flag. Game doesn't care. <laughs> He's dead. Got it. Okay. So that's, you know, that obviously wouldn't really do anything because if Capra Demon is dead, uh, I mean, yeah. there's going to be a gravity rate applied to a, a corpse. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> okay. So now what we're going to do actually is I'm just going to remind myself how this works. <laughs> In our AI script, oh. when we start that action, we're going to enable something that we can actually check. Okay. In in the event script. Yeah. That's what I'm curious about is like how they talk to each other. Like what number? Yeah. Is the, the names are a bit hard to remember. Uh, let me just look again. Find. Artorius. So Artorius definitely does it. Ooh. Um, shall just look in my instruction list here. They they shipped param def file. Interesting. That's cool. Yeah, another reason that we the Dark Souls one params would be cracked quite easily. Mm -hmm. Okay, just gonna find this login. Mm. I just realized. I'm sorry, we're we're over three. Oh, that's okay. Three PM, but yeah, this should be a another ten minutes should take care of us here. Yeah, if you ever need to just bounce, just let me know, or you want to bounce, gotcha. like, whatever. <laughs> Not till we see this through. Okay. <laughs> and before one hour of troubleshooting, just kidding. <laughs> Uh, this is event scripting. This this is our bread and butter. We're experts now. That's right. So, I uh, just need to remember the function that Matt. If you're in chat, you might be able to remember it faster or hot pocket even um, to read those values from the AI script. Shared value between. Oh, AI maybe we and... just need to set a flag. I don't know if we can set flags in AI Ooh. scripts. That would do the same thing basically. Well, the one other, you know, just global. Exactly, yeah. Uh, one hack that we could do for this is in event scripts, we can wait for the health to fall below 0.5, and then we can just set this. We can enable the high speed for a certain time, the rough time we're expecting the, um, hmm. you know, the the attack to last. But mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> no, that proper wouldn't be the yeah exactly proper. Uh, Unless you need to go, in that case we can have <laughs> No, only only if we uh if a if a minute of searching here doesn't doesn't turn up what we need. Mm -hmm. Uh Hot Pocket says Nito's AI should have it for the sword Nito. plunge attack. Ah, yes. Yeah, because that, that's an attack that's triggered from AI, but the yeah. attack itself, um, you know, the game uses event scripts to warp the sword to where you're standing and then make it appear. Wow. Let's well, take a look at that. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. Events. Hmm. 5395. Create hazard. Create hazard. Wow. Oh, uh, it's not a Tay event, is it? I think that's a Tay event, Hot Pocket. Yeah, actually, now that I'm looking at it, I can't find a way to check an event script. You kind of... Event scripts can wait for a certain animation mm. data to be active, but you have to edit the animation for that. Wow. And event scripts can command AI scripts to do something. 
but I'm not sure there's a way because I don't think you can set flags from AI scripts. Hmm. That's interesting. Okay, maybe for now we will just do the times. All right, fair enough. The times thing. Okay, so then over here, uh, you said we're going to wait until eight, his HP is 0.5? Yeah, that's right. So what, to do that, context, uh, right? we want to use... Um, we're going to create a condition because the health check has to be loaded into a condition. We can't just do like a, an, yeah, an a instant call or something. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to, going to do if. Now you, yeah, I changed this in the last week, but for you to be if health less than um, all of these are. Uh, this is one command, just capitalized. I'll just send it to you. To, oh. It's, it's hard to speak in than. capitals. <laughs> yeah. If health less than. Zero. Okay. There you go. That one I just sent you. Cool. So if health if health less than is just a defined function for a check. Yeah, that's right. Cool. And then characters, that's pointing to Capra. Okay, nice. Um and you, uh, oh, I, I forgot to add the last argument. You want to put a 0 0.5 as the third argument. That's the last that. one, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then that was making me ask, uh, can you have two instances of the same character? Like, with that ID? Like, could that... If you just copy pasted Capra Demon, would this affect both of them? Um, sorry, can you say that again? I was just reading so pocket. Uh, the, found what we need because it's checking for characters dot c two two four zero right which is capra but if you like yeah. duplicated it like your onslaught mod or something like that that would affect both of them at the same time no it would only affect the um the original one uh, even if they had yeah the same id they oh. actually added i think it, it might have been in Sekiro, but definitely in elden ring they have the you have the ability to have the same entity id for multiple enemies and then you can do something to all of them at once which is really cool but uh no for now it would just find if, if they had, if Capra and its clone had the same entity ID, yeah. only the first one, I think, would be oh. would be checked by this call. The second one would basically not exist. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. All right. Oh, DS3. That was in DS3. Wow. There you go. Tells you, I'm <laughs> tells you how far in the past I am still. <laughs> okay. Um, but fortunately, Hot Pocket found what we need. There is an AI function to set an event flag value. So. Oh really? Yeah. So we can undo and, all this. Well, kind of. Oh no, we, we still need to check the, um, yeah, we can probably keep this check because okay. that's going to be the same condition and we'll use this event flag to stop the speed effect. Right. Once the, um, oh, is that going to work out? But in the AI script, there's actually no way to enable a flag when it ends because the AI script creates the goals, but it doesn't wait to see what happens to them after that. So actually that still might not might not work for us we probably would have to set up a proper uh, hmm. hey thing so let's stick with the timing for now i think hmm. can we load in a goal a, a new goal right after that that all it does is disable <laughs> oh actually no i know what we can do okay yeah um we know as soon as this attack ends what's going to happen is that activate's going to be called again so in activate, we can just check ah. if number one is set yeah. to one, and that's going to tell us that um, this attack is done. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it's going to run on. You know, it's going to keep enabling the same flag, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, we could. You know, we could check if the number's one and then set it to two once we've handled it here. That's true. That's See true. You. Okay. So yeah. So in our, do we just right at the top, right? It doesn't really matter. Yeah, sure. You can, you can do yeah. it anywhere in this function. Um, wh okay. What was the, so if, we're going to do AI get number, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oops. If AI get number zero, oops, equals one, then that means Capra has finished his super move. Um, and we can. AI set number to two. Oops. Wait. Yeah, zero that'll... two. Like that. Oh, uh, wait. Then is there? Nice. Yep. End. Okay. Then we want to enable this flag. 
Okay. Which is AI colon set event flag. Ooh. With three capitals in there. Set event flag. And then we have to pick a flag. So mm. we may as well use the next 537 flag, like uh, 1101 5377, I would suggest. Okay, and where? Oh, wait, 1101 537. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. it's just a new value that hasn't been used yet. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Whoop. All right. And that that's that. Set will just flip uh, it. We want to do oh. comma true. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Then. Okay. So. Just to reiterate, what we're trying to do is Capra's. We added in a flurry ability for Capra, and we're going to add an animation speed increase only for that attack. So we're going to detect. Well, I guess yeah. In the in the actual um, AI 09 attack function, that's where we can actually do the speed up, right? Where we're going to apply yeah. it. And then uh, we can't apply it here. No. But, um, our event script is. Oh, we, yeah, we can use a separate flag, I guess, here. And since we're waiting for. Yeah, there's, there's a couple of things to consider here. But okay. The event ID we're using for our check is 5376. But that, that flag is going to be enabled when that event finishes. But that event is not going to finish until this thing's done and dusted. So we can actually use the same ID as the trigger, even though there is, you know, it's going to be automatically enabled in the event script at some point. Just a way to, you know, save on using extra event flags. Okay. So I think what we want is to, um, yeah, we can enable the flag when this action is loaded. Okay. And then we can disable it in the activate for when the action's done. Okay. So uh, basically at the end of this, before it returns, we can just yeah, exactly. we can set that flag. And then, um, and what was that again? It's, let's see, uh, AI, AI colon set, set event, event flag. flag. Yeah. Okay. I think it should still work hot pocket, um, just cause it's okay if we use this, <laughs> use this flag. <laughs> uh, and the flag is the, the number that is, oh, this is, that's this one. Yeah. The five, three, yeah. seven, six. Where are we, wait, where yeah. are we going to make? Yeah. That, that's kind of what seven? I was just talking about. We could use seven, seven, but, uh, using seven, six would also work here just cause the event. It's a temporary flag, so it's always going to be reset when you load the map. And it's it's not going to ever be enabled in the event script until that event finishes, right. which means fate, this, this whole thing is over with. So, yeah, we can, oh, we can probably use I'm it here. Set it to true. Wait, yeah. yeah. Okay. And, that's and then let's flip. change the setting in the activate function yep. to set it to false. Okay. So this event is basically only enabled when the um, the effect should be applied. So now in our event script, we can wait for that flag to be enabled, apply the effect, and then in the same event, wait for it to be disabled again here, and then remove the special effect. So how is this... If we set it to false, doesn't that mean the event flag can can go through again? Uh, well, it won't be able to, because this event is not going to be waiting for it anymore. It'll be past that point, because we won't make this event restart. This is a one-off event. Oh, right, never restart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Once all things laid out, I think it should should be a bit easier to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I did ask for the, this to be a little more complicated version. <laughs> no, but this is good. This yeah. is good. Uh, it is good. I learned you can set event scripts, set it, set event flags from AI. That's there very useful. Any anything that you can read and set event scripts. I mean, I assume you can read them as well. Then you can, you know, you've got a you've got a stew going. Yeah. Um, okay. So the only thing right now is is we need to apply the special effect that we created to Capra, right? And then we also need That's to right. remove it at the end once it's done. Yeah. So yeah, let's go finish our, our event. And we don't need to check the health here either. No, we don't. Yeah. This, this event is now agnostic to <laughs> whenever, you know, it's waiting for AI to request this speed boost, basically. Yeah. All right. So what's our context or our syntax rather for? Uh, we want to just write, uh, we could, well, there's a few ways to do it. We could mm -hmm. write await and then, or main dot await, like mm -hmm. those red lines that you yep. see, mm -hmm. and then flag enabled. Flag enabled, okay. Uh, and the argument to flag enabled will oh. be actually this, this the same flag that we have as this, this event ID. I see. So one, five, three, seven, six. Oh, we, we do want to bracket after await. Oopsies. As well. 
Oh. <clears throat> uh, uh, print parenthesis. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, and then flag and then one more, one more at the end. Nested. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. You can see it in other lines for other conditions as well. Interesting. So yeah, we're, yeah, we're enabling mm -hmm. this on, on our own, sending it over and then, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the, just for this event, the fact that that ID is going to be enabled at the end of this event is basically irrelevant. Yeah. It's never going to get to that point unless everything else has already happened. Yeah. So that that's why we're able to get away with using the same ID as the trigger in the event. Yeah. Normally it would be risky business to do that. <laughs> and but better to save on IDs when you can because otherwise we'd have to go document that, you know, make sure we don't use 5377 as an event ID. Right, yeah. Or we're going to run into even worse problems. Okay, and then all we do here is just uh, apply the effect, right? That's right. So we want add special effect. Okay. And then, and then we'll, ID. Yep. Uh, oh, uh, the, the character. Yeah. Yeah. Characters. Don't. Um, so the, uh, you can see it's in the same event script ID, just below as ID, well. ID's 18. It. Yeah. I was just, uh, okay. Um, oh, right. For the ID. Yep. Characters dot C2240 underscore. Can't do an underscore. <laughs> That's, uh, also one of my <laughs> hotkeys. Okay. Um, is it just character comma, uh, effect number? Yep, that's right. Okay. Um, and now we want to main await for the flag to be disabled. So you can copy that line mm. and just change enabled to disabled. I want to type it. I like typing. Await flag <laughs> disabled. 1015376. And then remove special effect. Yeah? There you go. Yep. And... It's called a cancel special effect. Oh, come for on. Reasons, for reasons that are long lost to time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I should rename that, uh, actually. I've renamed oh, a lot of no. stuff recently anyway. It'd be a good time to do it. Um, and then, yeah, you pick the special effect ID as well. Mm -hmm. And then... That's it. That's it, to, yeah. You can let, let this event die. Uh, we probably want to change... It, it won't matter because in reality, there's no way to go rest at a bonfire after you start the fight. But we might want to change the restart type of this to restart on rest because Capra will, will, will reset, so... That's if fair. you manage to trigger phase two, glitch out of the arena and rest at a bonfire, <laughs> you will get to see the speed boost again. Sounds like a Lobos thing to do. All right. Um, so now, last thing is we actually have to call this event, or it's not going to ever be oh. used, just like the AI function. So I would just control F for the previous event. You can find out where that's called in the constructor, the five three seven five one. Mm -hmm, and just put mm -hmm. this one just below that. Oh. One one oh one. Oh, whoopsies. No, wait. One, one, zero. Oh, zero. There we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, right here. Yeah. And then just we're doing six. And, and you can six. see this is already in an indented block that's only going to run these events if Capra is uh, not dead. So that was a you know bit of I a see. redundant check we did. Yeah, but that's fair. That's fair. It's safe. Saving and now you can compliance. click. Yeah, just to make sure we got everything right. Looks like it. Cool. Export and then export events. event scripts. All right. Yep. And then I and need already, to copy over the AI. <laughs> that's right. And we already exported our params, so. Nice. Uh, this, sh this should work. This should work. <laughs> he said yeah. very confidently. Um, hold on one second. I'm going to run to the restroom. Yeah, no worries. Ooh. It was a big one. This is fun, though. As fun as AI editing in FromSoft games can be. So for those wondering, uh, given that I think the Elden Ring modding scene is going to be, you know, much bigger than the Dark Souls 1 modding scene was at the time, at least. The good news is that all of this is a lot easier in Elden Ring, as far as I know, unless we can't decompile that version of Lua for some reason. But it, I think it's, it's it's all public, so it should be able to. Anyway, that's the good news. Some stuff gets easier as these games get newer and some stuff gets harder. One thing that gets harder is just there's more to think about, right? The newer, the newer games are more complicated. There's more going on. There's a lot of unknown fields and all these structures and things. So, yeah, hit and miss. Um, I believe we can. That's great, Hot Bucket. There we go. <laughs> see, you could go look. I'd actually, I've never looked at a newer event script, but it'd be interesting to see how they've changed. Because one thing you can notice, and this is actually something I meant to mention, if, if we went and looked at 
Gwyn's AI script, you can tell which AI scripts from wrote early and which ones they wrote late. And if you go look at Gwyn's AI script, it is ancient. They don't use any of the utility functions. It's just lots of copy pasted um, <laughs> stuff. Artorius, on the other hand, is, you know, beauty, as beautiful as a Dark Souls 1 AI script can get. And there's lots of stuff going on with phase changes and his power up in that. So, yeah, definitely a lot of examples to look at. Speaking of examples, let's see. Oh, right, this is all default. Don't kick him. Um, game, character instance, character debug. No hide, no silence. Lobos, did you yabber? That's the question. I did yabber. I yabbed. Um, let's see about... You didn't yap, though. That's a different thing. <gasps> yap. Um, uh, what is it? What is it? You and... You and your AI. Just because. I don't know. Whatever. And there you go. All right. Let's see. All right. So if all of this worked correctly, when he hits 50%, he should want to do our Ultra Flurry ability, and he should have 3x animation speed for it, and only it. Here we go, let's see. Here we go. I don't think it worked. <laughs> now, wait. we've got the attack again, oh, but wait. not the speed. Wait, oh, did he get interrupted? I don't think so. I th Oh, I can, I, can, I can see the numbers change to two, so the attack's definitely over. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I didn't see a speed up at the start of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I think I know what it is. Oh. I don't think we changed the special effects, the new effects, to be infinite duration. I think it probably lasted for one frame. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Probably not very noticeable in that case. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> one frame see. of extra speed. Speed up. Sad, uh... So, there's a duration on here? Yeah, effect duration is zero. That's one frame. It's the third field right near the top. Oh. We yeah. want to say that's a minus it's one. It's so weird. I look at it grayed out. Um, I guess technically just... Was it negative one, you say? Yep, negative that's one. That's infinite? Okay. That's infinite, and it's up to us to determine to when it. to add and remove it. Okay. Yep. All right. Export params. Oh, yeah. did I, I didn't save first. Let's save. Uh, export should save as okay. well. Okay. Just making sure. It should. Um, and, and we will need to reboot. Yeah. And that should be that. Yeah, minus one equals infinity, Betty. It's your math lesson for today. That's right. I look at me saying math like an American. I'm sorry, family. <laughs> Uh-oh. Instead of, what? what's the alternative? Maths. I do find maths a bit cumbersome as far as... Maths? Maths. Mathematics. People say there are multiple maths? maths. I've n yeah, I didn't know Australia, that was a serious thing. We say maths. Oopsies. We, we have maths class in school. General maths, advanced maths. Wow. I did not know that. Well, yeah, I guess I mean, it's I've... mathematics, of course. Exactly. Yeah, it makes sense, but THS yeah, is, it... a, is a tough sound. <laughs> maths. Maths. A single mathematic pilot deviation, yeah. In America, they, they teach the one mathematic that really matters. <laughs> Minus one equals infinity. All right, let's see here. Do this business again, debug, let me be seen. Okay. You can hold um, L1, I think, to scroll faster in these menus, by the mm, way, it might help. Roger that. I'm just not even gonna pull up his AI. Let's just see him do it. Yeah. We're, I think we've confirmed that, aside from maybe interrupts, taking, yeah, taking yeah, things yeah. away, it, I think the uh, AI is working now. Yeah. Right, let's see. Uh, it looks like he's doing it now. If he does another right yeah. hand, yeah, he did it. Okay, well, no speed buff. No speed. Interesting. Right. So, this is the point. This is an event script thing now, I think, where we want to add a big old banner to the event script. Nice. So that when, it, when the event script gets to the state we want it to be in, we display ring revival or uh -oh. magic revival or something <laughs> like that. This is the equivalent Perfect. of printf debugging yes. in event scripts. I love it. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Event script. And if that works, we'll know that the problem is in the um, param. All right. So uh, five, three, seven, six. Oh my goodness. Where Actually, yeah. Just before we do this, it's worth probably checking the rest of the param because there are fields about oh. who the param is allowed to affect. And again, the the template one might not be allowed to affect enemies all if right. you scroll all the way to the bottom. Where the, all the, the way. Oh. Effects. 
Is it enabled for enemies? Just, yeah, just up a little bit. Can affect AI players. Can affect enemy off. Ah, uh, okay. So, yeah, that, that'd that be it, <laughs> I think. They're all off. <laughs> and, yeah, they are all off. Yeah, I would put, like, at least the first six of these on. Yeah, like, they normally all it's, it's good yeah. to know. This is why, yeah, finding a good template effect can be tricky. Uh, <laughs> I... I would be very confident that this was the issue. Just okay. Event scripts never betray us. So. Ah, fair enough. All right, export. Even though we are enabling a flag from AI for the first time ever. It is the first time ever. I, I just hope that it will. Um, we know the AI script is, is working. Uh, does it matter if we exported while the game is running? Um, it, it won't. You, you will have to restart the game, but no, right. it won't affect yeah. the okay. ability. No. Cool. The game never, never checks this file again once it loads. Got it. <laughs> All right. Trying to give Capra some some extra power here. Mm. Take it. Take it. Character debug. Uh, left bumper. Oh, there you go. There. Okay. Uh, oh, silence. Hide. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Ah. Hmm. No luck. No Again. luck. Maybe we will do the event check then, just to make sure. I'm determined to get this. I want to see the. <laughs> I want to see the yeah, event it's, check. Yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be worth the payoff. Mm -hmm. Dying faster to capture mm -hmm. David. All right. We don't need to reload param so we can keep the game open, right? Exactly. Yeah. All right. So Still in the event we're doing this. Yeah, that's right. Excellent. I love this sort of debug stuff. Um, okay. Five, three, seven, six, right? Oops. Yeah. Five, three, seven, you six. Can, uh, yep. There we go. Restart on rest. We've got definition, blah, 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 blah. Those numbers match up. Okay. So, on enable, or... Yeah, I think on enable. Okay. And in fact, while we're testing it, and given that it's easy to reload event scripts, we can just um, get rid of the cancel special effect so that it should just be permanent that's fair. speed that's fair and that way um that way we'll know that the effect is starting because if something's going wrong and the effect is kind of en ending itself straight away then this will um avoid that it shouldn't matter if main await but nothing underneath it right uh you might want to comment that out okay. as well <laughs> there, there is a funny some funny behavior with Very awaits well. as last lines and scripts you know very well. Uh, and then, yeah, let's just add a banner command after under the add special effect. So you can write display banner. Mm. Yes. And then the argument's going to be banner type with capital B and T okay. dot. Um, let's do magic revival, given that we never get to see that in the vanilla game. Magic revival. Yeah, that's for the cut, um, the cut miracle that gives you the resurrection ability. Whoa, cool. Okay. And that's that. Yeah, just save and uh, export up the top. Export event script. Boom. All right, let's see. Let's see Never if we get before a seen. Nice Not magic true. <laughs> Have you used this in any of your mods? I did restore this spell for Daughters of Ash. Yeah. Oh, the, man. Um, nice. The, I think I just restored it as it is, basically. But yeah, it gives you Ring of, Re Ring of Revival. Cool. Magic banner. revived. Now I did it really quickly and then turned off. That's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't last long. But um. All right. Yeah, we so we didn't. We're not seeing any speed here, so we know this is an effect issue. I think there's probably another stupid field in there <laughs> <laughs> that's preventing it from applying. We can actually. I should have thought it, but we can inspect which special effects are active on the Capra Demon as well using debug menu. Ah. Uh. Which is also useful. But I think for now, let's go use a different hang on let me actually look at this template myself I'm just in case i can spot looking. it might be a category because some categories don't allow other effects to to work next special effect special special effect per update special effect category unknown zero if there's no category it should be okay okay priority uh Okay, we're just gonna cop we're gonna copy one that I know works for sure. <laughs> Throw so find it. 
By the way, all they left all of the Demon Souls special effects in the oh, game as well. Oh, nice. Reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's always funny. Why will current enemies ignore gravity posing and things in those effects? Affects characters with no covenant. Off. What? I um. Uh, that might that might be an issue as well. I mean, <laughs> maybe we want to tick all of them. I maybe just it's so tick, like tick anything that starts with effects. Let's tick. <laughs> I'm just I'm just yeah. On 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 on. Affects everything. I can't believe. Uh, yeah. but yeah, we give them immunity as well. <laughs> Wait, what? Immortal. I think you some uh, some immunities. Oh my gosh. That's it. Oh, I see. I see. Effect by effect. Extension yeah, you might want to take this. So we never know what could happen. <laughs> You ticked for New Game Plus only. That's probably yeah going to be an issue as well. Uh, <laughs> use faith scaling, intelligence scaling, uh, visual effect, and effect attacker. Yeah, okay, can affect, can affect effects. Ignore gra ignore gravity. Okay. I don't think that does anything. But well, yeah, I would not take it just to be safe. Or you can leave it ticked. You know, you never know. Yeah, we're gonna see. All right, let's try this. Last effect check. Yeah, I mean, what <laughs> I would, what do I love to see, which I know is not going to happen, but he just suddenly has no gravity and he flies up in the air and it's like, mm -hmm. but yeah. Instant ragdoll mode. Mm -hmm. You can force enemies to enter ragdoll state from the from debug menu at any time. It's a pretty funny thing to do. Magic revived. Oh, there he goes. No. Nope. Okay, why don't we, um, why don't we Different open template. the debug menu? Oh. Oh, maybe next time we can I see, try. I see, I see, I see. And I then... was going to just inspect the special effects that are active. I will do that. Easy enough to jump back in there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, world character main. Do you know? Yes, you pull you up. And w is it AI or no? Where are we looking? For the special um, effects. It's oh, in special, yeah, special effect effects. With two C's? Down. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Just this one right here? Yeah. SPFX. So, yeah, you can see all the effects that are active right now. So, ID 18 is what we're looking for? Yeah, we should see that pop up at half health. And we know the event script is, is calling that it line. It is. So, no excuse. Something was removed. 31. There it is. It's there. It's there. It's there. It is there? Uh, wait, now it's gone. Oh, but it was supposed to be removed. No, wait, it's there. Wait. <laughs> but it's, it's still there. But yeah, it's not it's just... blocked? Or triangled? Do you yeah, know what I, that I, means? I have no idea what the square and the triangle means. Hmm. Okay, I think... Oh, it's gone again. Or... It's still there, I think. It's oh, always I, number I was seven looking now. at the... the... Yeah, the bottom one. The, yeah, because 31 looking. appears and goes. You can see the counter damage of uh, special effect appearing and disappearing. Oh, I see. 31. Yeah. Take counter damage. Nice. Hot Pocket says, I think that means it's not allowed to apply. Okay. let's. Wow. Wait, I think we're, we're done with special effect zero. Let's go <laughs> copy a different one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> is uh, definitely going to work. Okay. What definitely works on a boss? Uh, I would copy 3000, which is Three. simple healing effects. That's... Works for everyone. I like that. And, HP. Um, we yeah. will duplicate entry entry to next available ID. It is three thousand one. Capra, speed. And we won't touch it. Other than what? What are we removing? The heal thing. Yeah. Heal effect. Eight. Oh, I think I think I discovered what the problem was as well. We had them. The stupid default effect has max HP percentage set to zero, like the red ring, the red tear stone ring check. So the effect would only be applied when Capra is at or below zero health. <laughs> Fair enough. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know why it was set to zero, but there you go. Anyway, this this should um get around that. All right. And uh, oh, do we don't need to? Do we need to adjust the param at all? Just the animation speed. Yeah. And the, the, uh, the HP uh, reduction yeah. percentage. You want to set that to zero, I think, if you don't want the healing to apply. Yes, I don't. Okay, so that's yeah. the actual healing effect. HP reduction percentage, and that yep, just... And, and you put <laughs> negative 100. Okay, so but normally it would just run one frame and it would go, boop, he's full health, and then... Exactly, yeah. So okay. that's 
you could leave that and Capri's going to basically be in, in, invincible for this effect. But... <laughs> that would be interesting. It's already okay. going to be so powerful. Yeah. Wait, it wasn't near the top? It's about a uh, third of the way not, down, yeah. I think. It's ridiculous. Animation ID offset. Speed multiplier. 3.0. Capra speed is 3,001. We make this effect duration negative 1. Um, yep. Okay. Pretty cool. And then events. Want to uh, export those events as well. I mean, the oh, parameters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very true. Very true. Export. 3,001, so instead of 18 over here, 3,001. And I, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm confident, I'm gonna bring back in the cancel effect. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. You, you can uh -oh. get rid of the banner as well. Uh-oh. Oh yeah, the banner, oh, maybe we leave the banner, I don't know. <laughs> Banner's cool. The banner lets you know something. It's very cool. Yes. Something has happened. Big attack incoming. Um, okay, I'll you need an extra uh, bracket at the end of that second await as well. Ah, yes. I accidentally ran two lines into each other. Export event script. Okay. And export params. I think. Oh, hang on. We want to change that cancel. It's still canceling. 18. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Absolutely right. And yeah, AI is just calling that event script, right? Yeah. So we AI, you're, you're, you're perfect. Don't change a thing. Okay. All right. Let's go. Now we got it. It's gonna do it. Make Capra a bit faster for, faster for about five seconds. Took about three hours of debugging. No, it didn't. This entire thing was three hours. All our learning and all of that. Hello. Besides, all of our three hour debugging, which wasn't three hours, is here to prevent, to prevent you from having to do three hours of debugging when you go to make your mod. All right. Oops. You can see how many traps there are to run into uh, when, you're, when you're doing this kind of thing, unfortunately. But the event scripting works. Uh, okay, so... Uh, yeah, 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 we're just going. We're going! we go, let's see. There it is! Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! Super attack. There we go. He did it. Awesome. Well, after all that, pretty flawless execution, I think. Get killed. Nice. Did it. Aww. GG. Finally, awesome. we got the key to the deaths. Awesome. We go get ambushed by a rat. A bamboozled. <laughs> Freaking bamboozle rat, man. Yeah, sweet. Okay, as usual. Uh, well, honestly, as usual, when you're running and when, when you're doing stuff like this, you'll run into issues, but you problem solve them and you fix them, and then, or maybe you restart them, and then they work, and you don't know why, but they work, and you change the game. It, yeah, it, it, it's it, always you know. I think ninety percent of that we did straight away, and the last ten percent is figuring out we had a zero instead of a minus one somewhere, which is always the way it goes. So. Right. Yep, yep. That's that's the kind of stuff that can get in the way. But it typically only happens once. Like, I'll certainly... You'll I probably learn, learn this lesson multiple times, but I'm not yep. using uh, Special Effect Zero as a template again. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Special has, Effect uh, 3000 is a self-heal. Yep. Take that off and then make, do whatever you want with it. Very nice. Yep. There you go. Very nice. Cool. Awesome. Well, that was great. Thanks so much for sticking around and helping us get all that together. That was awesome. So, yeah, like, there's so much stuff you can do with all that, especially now that you can... Talk to the event scripts from the AI. Like, yeah, you said that was new to you, right? Like, so. Yeah, exactly. That yeah. makes things a lot easier. Just, you know, communicating between these different sources of game logic. You know, the AI, the AI scripts are doing relatively less than the event scripts. Yeah. In fact, you could hack together your own AI scripts by just forcing animations in the, the event <laughs> scripts, but wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure it would break and you'd get it poop walking. But yeah, you know. Absolutely. You need to learn all these different formats to be able to <laughs> assemble them all together into something that's really cool, like hard Capra Demon. Hard Capra Demon, or at least you know, slightly buffed Capra Demon. <laughs> yeah, sweet. Thank you so much, Grim. Um, and we were uploading these episodes to YouTube, by the way. So if you missed one or you're like you're completely lost but you're interested, like check out episode one up there 
Um, Grim's just donating his time, uh, as with all of these things, with his mod creation, all this stuff. He's got a Patreon if you want to support his efforts. And any other modders here usually have a VIP by their name, and uh, they are welcome to, if you are interested, post your support info here, because support modders! Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't have all these awesome ways of extending our soul's experiences. So, um, sweet. Yeah, what are you thank up to? you all. Yeah, what are you up to the rest of the day, Grim? Uh, well, it's five to five here. I think I'll do a little bit more work, and then I might get into some Nightfall. Ooh, That's very good. Like to do. Very we'll excited, see. very excited for Nightfall, so, <laughs> yep. yeah. And we'll, 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 we will have some larger updates about Nightfall coming soon. We're at that point now where, you know, it takes, just like we found, it takes so long to polish the last 10, 20% of the project. And, yeah. you know, it's hard to preview much without just spoiling at this point. Uh -huh. But I do want to, I do want people to know we're working on it. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks yeah. so much, Grim. And uh, let's see, next Friday, I will, I will be here. So, yeah. Back here yeah, for... I might have to take next Friday off, but Not uh, if, a problem. if there's any other modders in the room, I know there are who, yeah, want to yeah, deliver a you... special episode, then... <laughs> if any other well, modders want to join me, send me a message. Uh, Discord probably works best. I'm on the um, the modding Discord. You can hit me up, Hot Pocket, if you want to go over some stuff. Like, pff, whatever you got in mind. Like, I am totally open to, to learning or featuring or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Mod check, yeah. Thank you, Grim. Um, no so, worries. Yeah, Thanks, we'll everyone. See you Thanks, in a Lobos. couple Fridays, and yeah, good luck with Nightfall. Thank you. See you next time. Yes. Bye bye. Sweet. The thing is, the coolest stuff is we end these episodes, and we we spend a lot of it right learning and kind of going, oh, okay, this, this, this. But then, like the last ten minutes, like I feel like I can just. Okay, now let's do this. Now let's do this. And then suddenly you can just so quickly transform a boss fight or whatever you're doing, you know, add ambush rat or ambush capra and you're good to go. The benefit to you guys watching this is you could do that right now if you have the time. Whereas um, I'm going to keep streaming, which is fine too. Um, but I do, I really feel strongly about sitting down at some point, coming up with a solid idea for a mod and actively working on it outside of Lobos SFX, of course. So, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Speaking of which, just to remind you guys, Lakev Dev um, is running a modathon this weekend. And you have from now until I think Sunday through Sunday to create a mod. And then myself. And uh, Amir and Zully uh, are all going to uh, judge these mods. And there will be winners. One for, like, overall best mod. And then, like, a couple of maybe secret judge uh, categories. That who knows what they might be. <laughs> so we'll see. 